So yeah, this is going to be a 3.1 uh, Olimar matchup chart that I'm going to make. I'll try and give some level of explanation on every character. Some will definitely be more detailed than others. Uh, I'm not going to lie and say I've got the most matchup experience in every category. Uh, big thing to note, I am going to assume that my shield has been fixed. Um, so like, let's say patch 4.0 comes, they fix all of our shield, they don't patch anything else. This would be that, that theoretical tier list, our matchup chart, because you can't really reliably play around your shield being poked. And since it is such a wild thing, I, I do believe it'll be fixed. So I will assume that as such. So I'll just start from the top and go down. I'm not going to touch... Uh, I'm only going to touch Echoes if they're relevant to a matchup. So something like a Roy Crom as opposed to Peach Daisy. Okay. So, yeah. It's broken up into five categories. Strong advantage, slight advantage, even, slight and strong disadvantage. So we'll get right into it. Bayonetta. Played against a couple Bayonettas. A couple different Bayonettas. I've talked to some. Pre-patch was definitely hard Olimar favor. Like, it's an easy strong advantage for Olimar. Uh, you beat her out in a lot of ways now that your aerials are swords. You kill her very easily. Um, she can struggle to kill sometimes. You can edge guard her. Uh, post patch, the big thing for Olimar that that really hurt him um, was the recovery nerf. So in theory, Bayonetta should be edge guarding him a lot more. I think um, because he's every time he gets hit off stage, he's going to lose a lot of that. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna not get his fuel back as quickly, things like that. So it's gonna be a lot easier to edge guard him. I know her edge guarding isn't as good as it used to be, but I think it's still pretty good at least against Olimar, um, as long as you're smart with it. <clears throat> um, in the neutral, Olimar definitely dictates it. She has big damage combos, but she can oftentimes struggle to kill outside of things like a like a back air or some other hard hitting move like a smash or something like that. Um, I personally. I'm thinking about like putting it in a slight advantage type of thing, just based on like a slight advantage for Olimar, just based on the recovery nerf mixed with her already solid edge guarding abilities against Olimar. Plus, um, I believe the F smash or the up smash nerf also made our shield pressure a little bit worse on her. I don't know if she can witch twist it, she might be able to now. Um, but it can still be a little tough. So Olimar still wins the matchup. But I personally feel it's a slight advantage, and I think Bayonetta players just aren't doing a good enough job of edgeguarding Olimar and exploiting that weakness. Um, all right, Bowser. Uh, Olimar does, typically does well against heavies. Um, he, Bowser's probably the most annoying heavy just because his out of shield options are very good. Uh, he has a frame 6, I believe, up yet of shield, which post patch means you can't hit him with anything. Except maybe a tipper F smash or a fair bear that are spaced potentially and not get up beat out of shield. He's not that fast. Or well, no, that's not true. He is pretty fast, but he's not like super super quick like some characters. And he doesn't have the best shield pressure tools. A lot of his tools come from mix ups, uh, either catching you hitting a shield, uh, grab mix ups with side B and things like that because he grabs very fast or his side B is very fast. So it's a lot. It's like a much slower paced game, kind of camping him. I think reds are really good because they like to spam fire breath, and that's going to beat that. Purples are really good. Once you touch him, he's combo food. Down tilt's a semi-reliable way to poke him off stage. The only really thing he has going for him is kind of like high kill power. But if you understand his range, you respect it, and you know when to hit a shield and not, I think you can get a pretty good advantage on him. So I would say strong advantage. I'm sure there are Bowsers out there that would say it might be slight advantage if they really work things. But I think the Olimar's playing like really conservative and kind of just like not letting Bowser get in. He's going to have a really hard time. And then when you touch him, it's just like combo food. Uh, and then just knowing to not hold shield and not like don't get scared of him like you would a lot of super heavies. So that's the big thing. So I want to put Bowser in strong advantage just because if you play it really lame and you don't hit a shield like an idiot, you're going to be fine. Oh, I just do want to clarify that, like, I might not have super in-depth explanations for every character, but I feel like sometimes the talking points kind of are just so broad, clear-cut, that you don't need to go in-depth so much. Like, I could probably sit there and break down every little, like, nuance of Bowser, but it's not going to do too much in the long run. Bowser down is terrible. <laughs> just don't shield. The thing about Bowser is don't shield. Don't stay in one spot and don't shield, and you're going to be a lot harder to fight. Use your aerials that are swords, use yellows to outrange him, use purples to pressure him from afar, use reds to go through flame breath, learn how to SDI fire breath, because so many people suck at that, and they're getting hit for no reason, or like, they're, they're getting hit, but they're taking way more damage than they need to, you can get out of there and take like 20% or less, um, 
you know, knowing what, what you can dodge, what you can't, respecting things like fair's range and all that, you're going to be fine. Tough guy doesn't really affect Olimar because he has so much knockback on a lot of his moves. Um, so yeah, that's why I think about a strong advantage. It could be slight advantage, you know. Um, at the end of the day, I think Olimar wins it regardless. It's just how hard he wins it. Um, that's that's definitely something that I think can go either way in, in these uh, matchup spots. I definitely don't expect everyone to agree with this. Um, Bowser Jr., uh, I would put in strong advantage as well, just off the bat. I feel like if you, once again, know a lot of Bowser Jr.'s tricks, it's really hard for him to do things. He's like usually forced to approach with side B mix-ups, which F-Smash straight up beats. You know, using the, the clown or the, um, the like, bomb thing, the down B, the toy bomb thing. Um, but you can shield that and it'll go away, or you can pick it up and deal with it. Just like knowing how to stop his options. His aerials are very good, and they can catch you off stage when you're... When you're getting punished, but like he has to get you off stage, and the neutrals where it's very hard for him, and even then he has a lot of single hits outside of like up smash and forward smash. Um, so whistle works wonders against him, um, especially when you're Koopa, That's it. Um, cannonball, it's like just don't run into it. It's a slow moving projectile. I, I mean, if you're running into that, that's you getting scared and getting caught a lot of the time. Uh, I also feel like you're able to juke his his off stage game decently with your up B. Um, I'm sure the shield damage or the shield safeness nerf hurts some. But it, I don't think it's so bad against Bowser Jr. He might be able to up smash you out of shield on some stuff. But you can generally poke him with a lot of other options. Um, and kind of just like respect options. If he's near the ledge, be ready for his up B mix ups where he'll up B to the ledge and go past and hit you with uh, you know his hammer and things like that, right? Uh, I think F smash trades with Cannibal. I think. I'm not 100% sure. But like he doesn't really have a good way to get in. His out of shield options aren't as, better, as, as good as Bowser's. And his kill power is not as scary. I'm actually going to put Bowser in slight advantage the more I'm thinking about it. I feel like his out of shield is kind of good. And it's really easy to slip up against him. And when you slip up, it's a lot more disastrous. Um, plus, he's pretty fast. And he has good grab mix ups between side B and regular grab. Whereas Bowser Jr. is kind of just like. It's a lot more straightforward. Up smash frame 6? Okay. Yeah, even then, though, that's like not. Like, it's going to punish up smash, sure. But like. Most Olimars aren't up smashing on shield these days. So it's usually not too big of a worry. I honestly think it's like, I don't think that one out of shield option is enough of a redeeming option to hit him either. Or to like make it any better for him. I think it's pretty bad. But Falcon, I would say it's, I would say it's even. Uh, Falcon's out of shield option game is actually kind of bad in my opinion. Like I think his fast option is like near out of shield and it's like seven or something. But it's not the easiest to hit. I think a probably scoop Olimar. His up out of shield is not very good. The biggest things against Falcon are understanding how he plays his neutral, watching out for things like Raptor Boost, which has armor, uh, random Falcon kicks, spaced aerials like Nair. His Nair is very good. His bear is pretty good. Uh, his knee hitbox is a bit bigger, so you can get caught with that if you're slipping a little bit. But just like, he's going to try and mix you up a lot in neutral with uh, with his movement and his option to try and either catch you with a grab and then a combo or Nair on your shield. So just kind of stopping him before he gets in is pretty important. Uh, he's combo food, your combo food. For him, like his up airs are very good on you. I think you can whistle out of stuff though, so it's not as ridiculous. The biggest thing is to watch out for the single hit and air conversions, like single hit and air and a knee and stuff like that. And then his up be out of shield, or hit not up out of, out of shield, but his up be in general is such a ludicrous like grab box on it that I think the only reason it is even is because off stage it's so hard to get away from him. Like you can do it, but like it's it's. He just like catches you. I, I fall. I was fighting fatality, and he grabbed me when I was above him. Like he was here, I'm here, and I got grabbed, and then I died because it's a kill move. So he can be a bit aggressive off stage. Uh, the way his upbeat changes change worked, especially with our the way our ledge pressure changed from Smash Four to this game. It's also a little bit harder to edge guard him. So I think with his speed, it's very volatile. You both combo each other, and you can both kill each other off stage if you hit him. But his recovery is a bit better. I think it's even. Um, I think Olimar is a bit more destructive on stage generally. Doesn't rely off so much like single hit and air confirms or these like really specific instances where they get these big combos. But Falcon can kind of keep up very well, so I think it's even. Especially with the Falcon buffs, how he can do things a bit better. Uh, I don't think our shield patch, our shield damage nerf did too much. The FB nerf didn't really do too much because Falcon's not hitting you over and over again. And the F smash nerf is kind of just making it harder to kill in addition to its lack of safeness. So it's not too big of a deal. But I think it's an even matchup. All right, so for trainer, I'm gonna talk about all of them at the same time, and I want to put them in one uniform category. You know, trainer does all this. I don't want to break them all down because I'm not fighting all of them. I'll talk about all of them, but I'm not gonna individually put Charizard, Squirtle, Ivysaur on there. On uh, instead, just put trainer. Um, and with that, I think trainer loses. Uh, slight, slight advantage for Olimar. That is, each of the Pokemon lose to Olimar individually, uh, in varying degrees. I think 
Charizard is strong advantage for Olimar, and then Ivysaur and Squirtle are uh, slight advantage for Olimar. Because Olimar can kind of individually deal with all of them. Squirtle, while he has good combos, and he has a strong approach game, and things like that and good mobility, he dies extremely early. Like, ridiculously early. He, If you catch him slipping, he's going to lose stock. You have a sword. You have your, you have your sword aerial, so those are pretty good at catching him. His out-of-shield options are alright. They're not the best, but since you're short, he can sometimes miss stuff. I believe he can't do like a short hop bear and catch you or something like that. I think I saw. His side B, that's another pretty good approach tool. Well, if you F smash his uh, withdrawal as he's coming in, it hits it, and then it makes him move away slowly after he hits the F smash. So you are, you're actu actually able to grab him for free. Um... Not saying they can't win. Like, these only slight advantages for Olimar, for like Squirtle, for instance, right? So it's definitely doable. These aren't, like, Olimar can lose any, you can lose any character. I, I, I want to make that clear. This just, on average, Olimar should be doing things, he should be controlling a lot better. He can rack up a lot of damage from afar. He can whistle out of some Squirtle combos um, and things, because a lot of the times when Squirtle's going for these extending combos, they're not so much with down air and bear. They're more for, they're more with up air and fair, and those are the ones that are more likely to be whistleable. So I think Squirtle, while he has some decent combos, it's more so at lower percent. And you can kind of outrange him in a lot of instances. You can kill him a lot easier. You can rack up damage much faster. And then Ivysaur, I think it's kind of annoying. He's got some decent aerials. And he can edgeguard semi-well with, like, down air and stuff. But neutral is kind of him throwing Rage Leaf. And you have to weave around that with your own movement and parries. You can have smash through it. Purple side B can beat it as well. Um, but once again, you're going to be getting a lot more chip damage on him than he is on you. At least you should. Um, just watching out what you're hitting a shield with, what things you're like, you, you can't just up smash on shield willy nilly anymore. Um, and then knowing what you can whistle, you can whistle the like fairs, you can whistle the uppies, you can whistle the up air and down airs. Um, things like the back air and the and the uh, the nair, they're a bit harder to whistle because of the multi hits. But Ivysaur doesn't really have boxing options. His up close game is kind of the occasional tilt or like a nair or bear out of shield or something like that. It's a lot of like get off me aerial, so he can start spacing with them again. And I think yellows help you a lot in that matchup. Purples are a good way to put um, Ivysaur in like a disadvantaged state where you can press your advantage. And I think that's... Olimar can take that a long way. Ivysaur doesn't have the best like get off me button. He's got some good confirms he can edgeguard well. But in the neutral, if you're playing right with Olimar, he's going to struggle to get a lot outside of his few confirms. You're going to be... You should be winning a majority of that. And when you win, it's probably going to count a lot more than when Ivysaur wins. Because he kind of like hits you and it repeats over and over again with these minor hits until he gets like a big down air or a big up air or a big up B. Um, and outside of those, I don't think it matters that much. So I think it's once again slight advantage for Olimar. I know it can be a bit of annoying because Razor Leaf is kind of frustrating. But you can punish a lot of things he does on shield, I believe, if you do them uh, spaced properly. Or like, like, or you react properly on them. This one's probably the most doable of all of them. I think it's still slight advantage for Olimar. I could see it being even in the future, maybe with the, more, the way things d develop more. But right now, Ivysaur feels more like he's looking for these specific things, like these specific setups, and without that, he, you know, he's kind of left without it. Pep's chest. What you do against Ivysaur when you're off stage? You just mix up your B. That's, like, you just... Olimar is so straightforward in what you have. Like, you have up B, air dodge, whistle. So you mix up the up B. You need to juke people. You have extremely high movement speed when you have no Pikmin. Throw a Pikmin. It'll look like you're going to go one way. Bait it out. Maybe go low and then start going up and then wait and dip down and hover. Let them commit. Then you go up to the ledge. Things like that. Ray Leaf kill turn Pikmin. Yeah, it does. But if you throw purples the right way, it'll, it'll beat Ray Leaf. Uh, Charizard is the last one. I think it's a strong advantage for Olimar. Charizard has like a frame 6 up smash out of shield, which isn't bad. And he can kill early. Sure. Just like a lot of super heavies can. But you can block slash beat out Flare Blitz if you do it with the right Pikmin and things like that. Um, don't hit a shield willy-nilly and you're not going to get up smashed or up bead. Going across stage can also help against Ivysaur. His outside of just like randomly catching you with tilts and fares and things like that and like aerials. How's What is he actually doing? He's scaring you into shield and he's trying to get you to commit. So you just like kind of sit outside his range side B. Use your sword aerials. Yellows especially. The range is so good. You're going to keep him out when you touch him. He's combo food. If he switches, that's great, because now he's in Squirtle, and Squirtle's going to die easily. So yeah, he has some survivability, and he's a good like mix-up option. I think that the power of Pokemon Trainer comes in the fact that they can kind of switch and get out of a bad spot in a moment's notice. But at the same time, they each have their own flaws that you can try and exploit. So he kind of just, I feel like he lacks any outstanding option. Like, whereas Bowser is a heavy, and he hits hard, he also has much more scary grab mix-ups he can grab in the air. Uh, it kills very easily. He's got a super good out-of-shield option that's with a B that hits on the ground, too, so there's no chance of you maybe low-profiling it or anything like that. Charizard can do it, but I think it's a, a bad spot for him. Actually, I'll put 
I'll put the, uh, the the Pokemon on here individually for you guys just to reference back and see. Trainer, I think they can do it. It's just not not the best. And I think Olimar can really exploit them more than they can more than they can exploit him. Good defense against Charizard. Yeah, like use your Pikmin to bait things out of him. He has to commit, and when he commits, you punish him hard. All right, Crom, 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 Crom. I I pre patch I thought this was an even matchup, and that's when we had way better shield pressure. And honestly. We lost some shield pressure. He's not a character that's exploiting our other nerfs that bad. The the hurt box increase is kind of annoying because he can landing up air easier, which is a little annoying. Um, but as long as you're smart about watching out for platform position, that's usually not a problem. So I want to say even. Like, he has up smash. He has up yet a shield if you hit him with a stale purple up smash. But you still have a good one up smash you can do. You still have your fair and bear. It's really big. You try to be smart about what you're doing. You can't pressure shield nearly as well as you used to be able to so you're kind of going for a more defensive mid-range game and you're catching him with a lot of um you're gonna be catching him with a lot of aerials as well because Chrom doesn't really rise with aerials he more so falls with them so while he's jumping to catch you because he has good speed you can sometimes try and anti-air him your own with a nair and a fair something like that or even or sorry an up air a nair, uh, fair or a bear and I think because he lacks the ability to really go off stage and press that advantage, like he's kind of just like a good swordsman on stage, um, I think it's even. I think the only reason I, I would say it's even and not slight Olimar advantage is because he doesn't have to work for his kills. The character has no sour spots, so it's just all straight kill power. Within reason, if you see him jumping, hit him before he has a hitbox out. Don't try and challenge him head on. He has good range. His jab is super good. His down tilt's super good. F tilt's super good. But Krom's kind of... Like Lucina, like a lot of these swordsmen, they get stuck in how they kill. Like, Krom's like to running F tilt. They like to jab back air. They like to, you know, step back F smash, things like that. They're kind of stuck in these very specific ways they kill. You know, maybe Dancing Blade. Um, but knowing what's safe and what's not takes you a long way. And something I've started working on doing myself is a character like Krom can normally pressure your shield pretty well with things like down tilt. The power in a Krom down tilting your shield is that... And this will apply to some of the other sorties later, but I'll mention it here. So Krom down tilts your shield. It's minus five. That means you can't punish Zolomar. You don't have an option fast enough, in theory. What you do, what you can do is you can wave dash back out of shield. And if Krom goes for another down tilt, or he goes for another option, and you have three Pikmin, you can grab. And that will actually outrange his attack and grab him. Because you've put a safe distance between you. Wave dash out of shield is frame six. You have three frames of jump squat, three frames before your air dodge starts. And then you start moving backwards with that. So when he hits your shield with these these disjoints, now unless he's going to run up and hit you, which isn't very likely all the time, it, it creates more of a mix-up scenario where now it's not always super safe, guaranteed, pop, pop, pop. Now it's, all right, now we play a bit more of a guessing game, and it gives you some extra options out of that. So I think it's even because he has a really easy time killing. He's got a lot of good confirms that are really easy to hit. So very, like he's got a lot of um, lenience in what he can do. Um, but we can also kind of contest him somewhat in the air, be careful about platform formations, like pay attention to what he's using them on, and then he's kind of limited in how he can approach. Fight him pretty head on. I, d I think if he could go off stage and edge guard more efficiently, it would probably be his favor, but because he can, he kind of keeps it very self-contained on stage. It's not too bad, because we can still fight him pretty well. He still gets comboed, we still hit very hard, and our yellows are very, like, pretty good. Alright, Cloud, 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 an even matchup. Somewhat similar reason. Um, Cloud's out of shield option is way better in that he he has a frame 7 out of shield option which means you can't ever up smash him so you have to respect his out of shield option and you gotta respect baron fair obviously but he's very gimp uh unlike Krom, who's got absurd airspeed and a much harder to challenge a b it's a lot easier to just like clip a cloud i feel at least from my experience so clipping him with forward smash like run off to the ledge forward smash um respecting baron stuff knowing when you can do it it kind of turns into that mix up when he back airs your shield it's not he back airs my shield and then he guaranteed gets another option it's he back airs my shield and now we kind of play a guessing game do i read his forward tilt do i read his grab do i read his you know do nothing things like that and then you go from there you just don't directly punish the back air when he back airs you you don't try to attack because you're gonna get forward tilted right he can juggle all right but once again he has only he has a lot of single hit moves outside of cross slash outside of limit blade beam and outside of forward smash everything is a multi hit or everything is a single hit. So up airs, while strong, they're not the best. He can't really falling up air you, I don't think. So you can whistle those pretty well. Watch out for bear. Once again, watch out for the platforms. A lot of these swordsmen like to use platforms to assist them in approaching. So they can immediately either jump up to the platform and then switch up their approach timing. Or retreat when they notice it's not good. So you need to abuse that and pay attention to it and catch them doing things like that. Cloud also doesn't really rise with aerials. So you can attempt to catch him when he's jumping and things like that. Um... So just respect his out-of-shield option. He's a bit more exploitable off stage. Yeah, you can go out there and fan, things like that. 
um, and just mix it up more. But in neutral, he's got he's kind of got to approach uh, with something like bear fair and just try and use side bees to bait those out. Um, white pivot grab is really good potentially, or you can try running under him while he's falling and catch him before he gets a back air out. The shield stun or the shield safeness nerf for Olimar didn't do too too much against these characters. Like it made a it made us be able to up smash a little bit less on their shield or not at all, right? So we just have to pressure differently. But the neutral's still the same primarily and that's just like you can have a little bit harder time killing because of the purple f smash nerf or the sweet spot nerf in general but you can still hit them you can still contest them we have sword aerials ourselves we have whistle they have a lot of single hits that's really good um we have solid boxing options where they're kind of limited in how they do it we have our jabs we have our down tilts um so just be very smart you can also juggle them pretty well especially if they're under a platform they don't really have a good way to land so that's why i think it's going even i definitely don't agree i don't expect a lot of olimars to agree with that just because how tough it can be um, and how overwhelming you can feel when they got you on the ledge or something like that. Just because someone's pressuring you like that, it doesn't mean it's bad. It means you might not be pairing enough, or you might not be understanding how to properly respect their options. Um, so when someone's like, like I was saying, when they back air your shield, you don't punish. It's when you played like when you played Olimar pre patch and you up smash someone's shield. It wasn't you up smash their shield and you get a free forward smash. It's you read their option and deal with it. And that's something that's a mentality you have to take into a lot of things in this game because there's so many safe options. Um, so just being a bit more confident in your neutral is going to help you a lot in these matchups. Learning how to parry, they have a lot of single hits. You know, parry, go into your quickest option, jab, down tilt, things like that. You're going to be a lot like more likely to get a punish if you use a uh, smash attack or something like that. And then knowing how to call out their jumps and things like that's going to help a lot. Corin, I want to say slight advantage. Um, Pin's definitely not as omnipotent as it was in Smash 4. Uh, her aerials are still pretty good, and I feel like she can juggle pretty well. It's kind of hard. Outside the juggling, there's not too much. You can challenge her off stage a lot more. It's pretty much, instead of neutral being free for Corn now, and the juggles being super oppressive and you can't catch them off stage, now it's neutral is a lot more in your favor. They don't, they can't just pin for free. You can catch them, you can challenge them a lot more now. The juggles aren't as good because you have a frame to whistle. So you can, and it has a faster first active frame, so you can oftentimes get fast um, past them in the air. You can go off stage, you can down air them so much more consistently now. There's no more, oh no, your down air gets beat, right? So now it's like, they have to treat you like a sword character, but they don't have the high speed and absurd hitboxes like a cloud back air with his speed or a crom does. And their shield pressure isn't that good either. They're not constantly down tilting your shield or something like that, like a crom would be. Dash attack? If they're catching you on dash attack, that's likely you're just not paying attention to the spacing properly because they're only going to go so far with dash attack. So you need to be looking at where you are in relation to them and going, okay, now dash attack is an option of theirs. So maybe I'll jump higher where they can't dash attack me or I'll retreat back where they can't. Or maybe I'll run in and down tilt them before they get a chance to. Things like that. Or maybe using a purple side B, throw it, and now it covers where they are. So if they go to dash attack, you can potentially catch them or it's going to force them into shield and you can pressure properly now. So you need to be looking at your spacing a lot more uh, fine, I guess, to be going, okay, I'm in threat of a dash attack here. I'm in threat of an up B here or a side B there. And that's going to help you kind of, that's the, you know, that's what I had to do in Smash 4. It's like, I'm at pin space in this range. So now I play differently and I adjust accordingly because th those options are only um, viable in certain, in certain areas. So I definitely think slight advantage. She can juggle somewhat well, or he can or whatever, but it's just, we have so many more pluses on him now. You know, we can juggle corn. Watch out for counter. It's still not as broken as it was in Smash 4. It's still pretty good, so you got to watch out for it. We can edge guard much more consistently. Neutral's much better in Olimar's favor. So, just, just not a good time for corn. Could definitely do it, but not, not that good. Peach, I think, is even still. Peach was a character that I felt was even pre-patch. And the nurse didn't make that much of a difference. The recovery nerf wasn't... It was. It, it makes a little bit of a difference if they're really good at like nairing over and over again off stage. But even then, you're usually gonna die. If that's gonna happen. Um, the shield pressure nerf, while a little unfortunate, means you just can't up smash at all, or else they'll bear you out of shield, assuming their backs to them. Or I don't know if nair will hit it. Might. Um, but you were never really pressuring Peach shield that much. A lot of the time when you're fighting Peach, it's because you're contesting her in the air with aerials, purple side B, especially yellow. The yellow are so busted in this matchup because they have that extra range that you can't really contest it. Um, going for things like that, going for max spaced forward smashes to cover her floats. So it keeps neutral a lot more uh, honest. And when you're fighting a Peach, you kind of have to be able to match their tempo. Because really good Peach players, they like to pressure you consistently with high damage output, high high safe on um, block things. But their pressure peters out eventually, right? 
Well, what you do is you go, okay, if you want to press a lot of buttons, I'm Olimar. I can also press a lot of buttons. I can purple side B into a fair, into a down tilt, or I can purple side B into a grab, or I can F smash into something else, right? You're kind of creating these your own versions of these block strings, and it's making it a lot harder for Peach to keep up. And when it's done in, like, the top level, it's going to be a very back-and-forth game where it's very even. You can edgeguard her somewhat reliably with yellows. Uh, yellow downer can be kind of a pain. You can go out there when she's floating and maybe fair or bear her. Purple side B if she hasn't parasoled. On stage, it's very back and forth. If you keep her out, she can't do anything. If she's on top of you, you can't really do anything. Um, plus, with her nerfs, especially the fair nerf, she's not going to be killing you as easy. Back though, not going to be killing you as easy. It's it's kind of just a back and forth game until one of you finally wears each other down. Uh, Dark Pit? I would have slight advantage. Um, he has a lot of multi hits, which is really good. He has a lot of multi-hits, which are good for whistle and good for catching air dodges. I'll just, I'll just put Pit and Dark Pit in the same category, as uh, same character, but I'll talk about them uh, each separately, because there's slight differences. But, yeah, they both have multi-hits, which are pretty good. But the downside of multi-hits is characters tend to pop out of those. Olimar is very good at just popping out of things. He's light, he's floaty, he's small. So while, yeah, sometimes you will get whistled, other times you'll just pop out of an up smash or something like that, you won't die and it's really good. Uh, they also struggle to kill sometimes outside of a hard F smash read or something like that, or a sweet spot bear because the sour spot of bear sends you straight up. It doesn't kill. It can be a bit tough. Uh, his arrows are, in my opinion, worse than uh, regular pits because they're limited trajectory. While you have the hit, they can kill and they can be pretty strong. Regular pit can pester you a lot more off stage with them, especially that the new nerf. The new nerf to uh, Olimar's recovery, those arrows can be a lot more frustrating. Their out of shield game is alright too. Uh, biggest thing is just to not be, you know, greedy and go for a ton of smashes or you're going to get reflected. But you can kind of outspace them with your own sword aerials and things like that. You can make it tough for them to get in. They don't have the best approach options outside of like a dash attack or a grab or something like that, mixing it up. So using like max space F smashes. But yeah, for Dark Pit, I think Electroshock Arm is definitely better than Upper Dash Arm because it kills horizontally. Um, but just respecting that option, knowing, you know, the range at which it's kind of um, deadly can be a bit more effective. Also, off stage, their recovery can be a bit exploitable. doesn't have a hitbox, so you can kind of down air, down smash, down tilt it semi-reliably. And they're not very heavy. Um, another thing I forgot to point out on a lot of these characters is just Olimar just kills them very easily. Like, Olimar is very powerful, so you're going to be getting killing stocks on a lot of characters very easily. Which is what things like up throw, back air, forward smash, up smash, assuming you hit the sweet spots on those. So yeah, I think it's slight advantage for Olimar. They can somewhat do it. They can go off stage. They can pester really well with things like Nair and Bear. Or sorry, Nair and Fair. Um, Pit, the difference is, especially his arrows are a lot better. His upper dash arm is worse, but his arrows are a bit better at pestering. But and that is pretty similar. Um, they kind of both use their multi hits to try and get you, but you're contesting them a lot with your own aerials and making it hard for them to do anything. You can land on them a lot easier with your, your dares and stuff like that, so it's really tough for them. So up next we have Dark Samus. Um, I'll just clump the Samuses together, but I'll, I'll use Dark because I see it more. I think it's a slight advantage for Olimar as well. Samus is in a weird spot because in theory you would think you, you would win really hard, right? Um, like... You can block a lot of the projectiles. You can, you know, Samus is rather slow, things like that. But Samus is, Samus' projectile does game pretty good. Uh, charge shot, especially weak charge shot, can combo and stuff, so it's easy to get caught by one of them and then get put into a bad spot. Her aerials are rather strong, especially Nair and Bear. Um, Fair is a good way to catch you, like, just, like, off stage. Um, their bombs are pretty strong, but... Even with all of that, and I think they have some good kill power and some decent confirms, you can still block a lot of the projectiles. Reds are going to be tanking um, missiles. Yellows are going to be tanking charge shots. And by tanking, I mean they will not die. They will just absorb it, and you're fine. You know, bomb, same thing with fire. So just don't be, be smart about your shield. Be smart about using Pikmin and respect things like their jab, like their F-tilt, like their grab, because they have a lot of... They have very long grab range. Um, but using, like, those max range Fs, max range F smashes, you're going to be able to, like, pressure them up close. Outside of up B out of shield, I don't think they have the best out of shield options, but when characters like Samus or even Cloud or Krom, when they have such a good out of shield option for themselves, they kind of, it kind of becomes over polarizing, where you don't even need to touch their shield for them to use it. You scare them uh, into using it, because you go, you're shielding, I'm right next to you, I'll make it look like I'm an attack. And then you shield, and then you get a free punish. So, it's kind of because it's such a good option, they almost find an over-reliance on it. Because if they don't use it, then their out-of-shield option game dwindles drastically. And now it becomes a mix-up where their supposedly amazing option is now a pretty good option. But not as good. But, yeah. I'm not saying Samus doesn't have bad options. But I think she doesn't have enough. She can't consistently get on an Olimar if he's blocking her things well. Watching out for Zares. Keeping in mind the grab range uh, difference. You can still kind of... Tr up close, I feel like Olimar's a lot scarier. His boxing options are very good. He's got... 
really good combos on her. He can approach from afar. Throwing purples, purple side B when you're when you're throwing them at different heights is such a broken option because unlike a lot of characters like a Ivysaur Razor Leaf or a Peach Turnip or a Samus Charge Shot, it's almost always the same thing. Or it's just one. It's like Razor Leaf, Turnip, Charge Shot. It'll come at always one angle, but with purples, the power in them comes on how easy it is to shift up your angle, shift up the timing, throw two, you know, have a Pikmin on their shield, things like that, and that's going to allow you to press, keep your, your mix-up game a lot more intact, and it's going to make it a lot harder to deal with, and because Samus lacks that raw speed and those massive disjoints outside of her projectiles and things like Zare, I, I find it a bit harder to get in. It's definitely a matchup you can get caught in if you're not careful, but... I just, I don't see it from my experience at least, a thing where it would be even. Because you can kind of, at the end of the day, you can still play that really slow, lame, campy game against her and make it a lot harder. And you're probably going to get chip damage much quicker. And then, if you're throwing Pikmin onto her, and she decides to kill one, and you've been spacing yourself appropriately, if she attacks one at the wrong time, you get a free punish. Diddy Kong is a weird character. He got some really good er, er, buffs and uh, the most recent patch. His recovery is a lot better now. Um, Banana is still a really frustrating option. His aerials are pretty good. I think it's still slight favor, Olimar, because... In neutral, as long as you're kind of smart about banana, as long as you're smart about banana, it's not too big of an issue. You can still use it to your advantage. You can kind of block it with Pikmin. Uh, the only difference is banana's transcendent in this game, so it'll beat out. It'll not beat out, but it'll like disable things, right? So in Smash 4, if I forward smashed a banana, I my forward smash would go through and I'd win. But in this game, if I forward smash a banana, uh, banana hits forward smash and cancels my forward smash. So it creates a weird thing where you can't space like spaces freely with the forward smashes, but you can still block it a lot with, a lot with Pikmin. Um, you can still kind of dance around Diddy using your boxing options. He's got down tilt and things like that, but they're not as busted. Um, his aerials are pretty good as well, but your your aerials are better. Like your bear, your fairy, your dare, they're all better than his. Uh, he has a lot of single hits as well, so you can also whistle his aerials semi-reliably. Um, and then if you're really good about it as well, you can gimp his recovery, purple side B, Nair. It's like, you just need to tap him, right? Just get him out of the barrels. Just be careful about that. In the neutral, um, I think Olimar has the advantage. He gets a lot more chip damage. He gets big grab combos on Diddy, a lot more damage. Um, reading a monkey flip, because they like to do that neutral a lot. You read that, he dies. Or he takes a big punish. Olimar doesn't have that option, right? He still has to approach Olimar. He still has to get in there. He still has to find his openings, either using banana or monkey flip or whatever it is. Whereas Olimar is kind of dictating the pace. He's going, I'm going to throw Pikmin. I'm going to do this. So you have to get in. And Olimar, once again, kills Diddy a lot easier than he kills him. Diddy can't edge guard Olimar that well. He can ledge trap pretty decently with banana and things like that. But ledge trapping is not the biggest thing. I would rather be ledge trapped than edge guarded because edge guarded burns up my B fuel a lot worse and puts me a lot, a lot farther off stage. Being on the ledge, I'm burning all this time, right? I'm getting hit. I'm knocking all the way back out. I'm gaining up E-Fuel a lot better. Um, and you also didn't have time to have a lot more options at the ledge than you would off stage. So I think it's a lot more helpful. How could you use Banana to benefit? I mean, you just throw it at Diddy. You use mix-ups. You can get block strings like Purple Side B into Banana or something like that and kind of force him into a spot where he doesn't have much of an option. Um, and then you're able to pressure him a lot better. So I think it's... Diddy can do it. Like, a lot of these slight advantage matchups are like... Well, Lamar, if he plays it right, he can kind of make it hard for the opponent, but if they have ways to get in there and kind of do things so they get in, it's not like... It feels weird putting in slight advantage, but I definitely feel like Olimar should be winning it. And if he does it right, it's going to be a lot harder for them than it is for Olimar. Donkey Kong, I would put in slight advantage as well. There's a lot of slight advantages. DK is a weirdly annoying character. So his back is pretty good, his tilts are pretty good. He's super hard combo food, and his out-of-shield game is worse than Bowser, so you can pressure him a bit better. Um... He has a lot of single hits outside of up B and stuff like that. Uh, so whistle's very good against him. Uh, you can whistle like a lot of his landing stuff if you're smart. Just be careful. Up air is pretty deceptively fast, and I think he has an intangible head. Um, so you got to be careful about hitting it, but you can definitely deal with it. Off stage, it's very easy to pressure him. Like down tilt hits his up B to uh, ledge snap so easily, and you can kind of just down tilt and then fair, or like put him in a spot where he has to like dodge, and then you rinse and repeat. Um, Big things are in neutral. Just watch out for dash attack because if you dash, if he dash attacks your shield and you up smash, it'll kill your Pikmin every time. Unless you turn your back to him, and then generally you can up smash out of shield that way because it won't hit the. Oh, sorry, it won't hit the Pikmin. But I think the only reason it's not strong advantage is because he does kill somewhat early. He can if he, like he's got a few good ways to kill you. I think he has a ding dong that works on all of them on certain stages, so you need to be smart about going to certain stages. I personally recommend avoiding Yoshi's story at all costs. Um, just because of how destructive it can be there. Like, you take to that top platform, you can lose your stock very early. And he can edgeguard somewhat well, but the neutral is very scary on his part. You're getting a lot of chip damage, 
And as long as you're smart about your disadvantage state on stage especially, like he's not going to be getting that much off of you. And you can pressure him a lot more freely than you could a character like Bowser. So I think he's the only reason he's slight advantage and not strong is just because his off stage game is pretty scary. And he's got decent on stage options, but that's only if he can get in on, get in on you. Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario. So I've played against Louie Money a few times, and his doc's very good. And the more I play against him, because he's taking games off me, he's taking sets off me with his doc or whatever. The more I play against him, the more I think, just camp him. Literally camp Dr. Mario. That character can't do anything about it. <laughs> like. Like, fighting him, it's so scary up close. He, his out-of-shield game is one of the best in the game. His kill confirms are absurd, like down throw down B. Or other, you know, other things like that, or pill into whatever. Or I think, like, down air confirms and stuff, right? But, like, oh boy, that guy get camped. Like, go to a big stage and run away. And now you are getting so much chip damage off him trying to approach. And just be smart about dodging pills, and it's going to be a lot better for you. Because his frame data is good, and he's really strong. But the lack of mobility is is so bad. And if you're really good about it, you could probably edge guard him if you're very smart about dare usage. But the biggest thing is just like in the neutral, it's just so so hard for him. Um, as long as you're not foolishly hitting a shield and playing very aggro, that's not a matchup you want to play aggro. And you just camp him. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it could be even eh. Like I've lost it, and I, I still can't bring myself to say I feel like it's even. I, I, it feels more like I'm doing things poorly. And I'm not properly fighting Dr. Mario like I should, right? Like, I'm treating him more like Mario or someone like that, where I, I don't need to worry about things like downbeat nearly as much. So I would say slight advantage. Um, so I want to put Duck Hunt inside advantage. Could be even. Uh, I do want to specify that, but I don't want to be one of those guys who puts a even or advantage category. Like, that just feels weird. And I would rather stick to my guns and be confident when I'm saying. Um, the matchup, once again, your aerials are better than his. Like, be smart about them. You're going to outspace him. Uh, you can kind of mess up a lot of his projectile stuff. Um, purple side B should beat Gunman, I believe. Uh, if not, Smash Tax will do it. Uh, Pikmin can blow up Can. Like, if you have a red Pikmin on front of Duck Hunt and he pulls out Can, it explodes in his face. So you can do things like that. You can constantly mess up with Purple Side B. Clay Pigeon's a little annoying, but you can break it. Just be careful about the, the shots it does, because those can still hit you. Um, and I feel like he can be a bit easier to edge guard than you are for him. You've got a bit more mobility with your up B than he does. It's a very back and forth game. Like it's one of those frustrating. Like you hit him, he hits you. You're kind of like slugging a bunch of things at each other. Uh, and if you're not sure how to get to his wall, it's gonna be very tough. But it's a lot of like good movement, using purples and reds, and like Pikmin to cover certain projectiles, block them, using purples to get in, force your way in. And once you're in, you're gonna be a lot scarier than he is. Falco, Falco, Falco. Okay. So Falco's got some all right things. He's got good, goodish frame data. He's got like you know frame two jab. He has frame 1 reflector, which is a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world. His up tilt's very good, but, 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 unlike a character like Fox, he doesn't really have a zone break option. Like, I, what's Falco getting in? He doesn't have the raw speed of Fox, right? He's got the verticality that is really good, but his up air is eh. Back air, while being really strong, not as fast as it used to be, so it's not the best option. Just watching out for things like his up tilt setups and, like, fair off stage, which you can do semi-reliably. Uh, I feel like he's going to take you a long way in this matchup. Like, he can edge guard well, and he's got some kill confirms, which I think helps keep him competitive. If not, it'd probably be strong advantage. But in neutral, he's just like, how do I how do I get in? You know, you're throwing things. You're poking. You know, you're using F-Smash down tilt. When you touch him, my man's combo food. He's much easier to edge guard than Fox and Falco. Do to, or, um, well, I don't want to say much easier, but he's easy-ish easy, easy -ish to edge guard because his... His recovery is kind of linear and how he does it. You can down tilt it. You can dare it. As long as you're smart about it, you're going to be able to hit him off stage and kill him very easily. He's also light as hell. Same with Fox. They just die. They explode when you touch them. Because he kind of lacks that immediate zone break option. And once he's in, he's got some alright stuff. But even then, it feels, eh. You know, I've fallen out of up tilt. I've, you know, had Pikmin mess it up. It's good, but it's a multi-hit and that kind of, kind of has some inconsistency to it. He's got a decent off-stage game with Fair and Nair and stuff like that, but even then, it can kind of you can still kind of exploit that with some good mobility. His RA kill confirms on stage, but in neutral, it's a nightmare for him. When you touch him, it's a nightmare for him. When he's off stage, if you're good, it's a nightmare for him. You know, don't you don't need to approach Falco. You kind of just like zone him out, and let him do it to himself. And if he reflects at the wrong time, free grab. Fox is, is a matchup that I've heard still a lot of people complain about. I think it's even. Um, the shield pressure nerf definitely made this matchup a lot more annoying because before um, I actually thought. I don't know if I put on my last match of chart, but I was at the point uh, before the nerf where I felt pretty well against Fox, potentially even beat him. But post-patch, you can't up-smash Fox's shield 
ever without getting up smashed, and that is garbage, <laughs> in my opinion. Fox, while having all right approach options, he kind of relies on platforms to approach, similar to how the sorties were doing, how I was mentioning earlier. He likes to jump up to a platform and kind of then mix it up with a dare or an air or something like that. Um, or maybe not jump to a platform and dash tag. But when you've got wide open space and he can't necessarily approach, or he has to approach with just a falling aerial, you're going to be catching him with aerials. You can potentially anti air with up tilt. Once again, Fox doesn't generally rise with aerials. He prefers to fall with them. So that lets you catch him on his jump. And if, if he's got room to fall, you can up air him. Your aerials are swords. He dies somewhat easy. If you're really good about handling things like side B because it doesn't go through shield and you can punish them, he's going to die very easily. You can down air his up B as long as you're good about it. Like, yeah, Fox players mix it up very well. And when they juggle you, it's very frustrating. And they can kill easily. They get good kill confirms. And I think it's kept even because he's got really good frame data. He can approach a pretty well, especially with platforms. And he has, it's like a very volatile matchup because he's got good kill confirms, he's got good juggling ability, you know, and things like that. But at the same time, you touch him, he's taking a lot of damage. He dies even easier than you die, in my opinion, because of the way the kill power is distributed. And you're able to challenge him in a lot of ways. Off stage, you can challenge him. On stage, you can use your aerials to beat him. So you just need to watch out for certain kill confirms. And there and up smash, there and up smash. Um, you know, yeah, letting him ledge trap you with smash attacks, things like that. Just keep mixing it up. It's going to be a lot easier for yourself. And just use the platforms to really pay attention to how he's approaching because he has to use them. So certain stages are going to provide you with a lot more advantage. Or if you're on a stage like um, Pokemon Stadium, for instance, fight in certain parts of the stage where those platforms don't give him a free approach anymore. And now he's going to have a lot harder time approaching. You can anti-air him. You can catch his landing. And it's going to be much easier. But I think it's even because it's very volatile. You'll find with a lot of Olimar's even matchups, it's even because they're so volatile. Like... It's like, I kill you really easy, or you kill me really easy. Similar to Peach, you're going to kind of need to accelerate the way you're playing, probably, to be able to handle it. Unless you can put up such a strong defensive wall, when he's up close, you're going to have to, it's going to be go time. You're going to be parrying. You're going to be having to doing quick block strings, really knowing the capabilities of your pressure, and how to punish it, and how to push it, and not hitting a shield with unsafe things, or you're going to get up smashed out of shield. He's got a frame 8 up smash. Do I hang around plats? Uh, yeah, definitely, I would not recommend it. Or if you do, be smart about it. Like, if you're under, like, a Smashville platform, stay under. Don't go to the ledge and give him all of this area over here to mix you up. Ganondorf, Ganondorf, Ganondorf. My man is strong advantage for Olimar. Character's slow as hell. Like, play it safe. Play it slow. Ganon can beat anybody. We all know that. We've seen it live. We, we've all been shambled by a Ganondorf at one point or another. But that really only happens when you get scared or he makes hard reads. And if you're getting hard read, it doesn't matter who he's playing because you're going to lose. Ganondorf... Camp the hell out of him. Respect certain options, similar to how, uh, what was the character I was talking about earlier that was doing it? How, like, Diddy Monkey Flip or Corn Pen or whatever, right? At certain distance, he likes to side B or down B. So you kind of pay attention to those and go, okay, well, I'm at the side B distance, so maybe I won't shield as much. Or I'll play a bit more mobile. Oh, I'm at the down B distance or something like that. I'll be ready to shield, right? No one you can hit his shield. His out of shield options are eh. His shield pressure is eh because he's kind of slow. He's got good stuff with, like, Nair and I think Bear. But other than that, he's slow and you can exploit that. You camp him. When he's off stage, Respect them. Don't risk it, you know? You want to try it, you want to try it, that's fine. Down B, or side B is not nearly as problematic for Olimar these days. Because he side B's you, mash up B. Because he's dying first and you're recovering. Every time. Because you're going to get down so low that your Pikmin are going to die. Because if Olimar uh, is low enough to the blast zone, and you up B, your Pikmin will just die. Because they'll fall into the blast zone and they'll die. And you recover for free. So make sure you're mashing out of LB. Uh, or side B. Up B, yeah, it kills very easily. So be careful about hitting a shield near the ledge like with a get up attack. But other than that, you kind of mix it up. Respect the smashes. Know their range. Uh, you need to know the, the threat zone around Ganon. But when you know that, you kind of just like run away, side B, catch him with these pokes. You know, catch him with the areas when he starts up. Once you get purples, you really start pressuring your shield. You dance around him. You can't do much about it. Does down smash work? Uh, not really. His, his ledge hang and stuff is so good. And the way he snaps, it's very hard. You're better off with like a down air. But even then, it's kind of it's kind of hard. <laughs> but I think it's just... Ganon's going to have to be making a lot of reads, and you're going to have to be fearing him a lot and giving him more respect than he deserves for him to really be making the most out of it. Uh, I would always recommend banning Yoshi's Island Brawl, even though Olimar loves that stage. It's just not worth Ganon just, like, tickling you there, dude. Like, ban that, and ban I would ban both Yoshis against Ganon. You don't want somewhere super small. Get really good at <clears throat> mixing up your side B techs, because that's totally, like, read-based on him. So if you mix it up well, he's not going to be getting anything off that. Um, I've heard a lot... <sighs> of back and forth in this. I've heard Greninja say they beat Olimar, and I think they're wrong. I've heard Olimar say Greninja beats Olimar, and well, they're wrong. Um, Greninja, I, fight, I fought this character so much. He has good shield pressure, yes. His Nair and Fair are wildly good. Oh, sorry. 
on shield pressuring. But, like a lot of these other characters, he does not rise with aerials. He falls with them. And if you fall, and Greninja especially has a lot of startup. My, like, my man's got to swing into it, right? So that's, you can up air him. You can up air him, you can fair him. Uh, I think he might think it's even. I'm not 100% sure, though, what Akashi thinks. Um, so, you can catch him, you can rising near and catch him. And that's going to make it a lot harder, and he's going to have to think about his approach much more. And while he does have tools, like his combos are good, although you can whistle out of things like dash attack, fair, um, and certain up tilt uh, combos, right? So, you're fighting him, and he's got good pressure. But when he hits your shield with like Nair or Fair, you just don't... It's a mix-up. It's like the other characters I was saying. You just don't try to punish. And you just be careful. Like, Greninja... He's good when he, when he like really gets in. But it's... It's not easy. It's not easy for him to get in. You challenge him. You make him think. His Water Shuriken's pretty good. His Shadow Sneak's very good. But he's got to really mix it up. It's a very back-and-forth volatile game. He kills you very early. You kill him extremely early. That dude is so light. His out-of-shield options are some of, if not the worst in the game. Greninja's fastest attack out-of-shield is Bear. It's frame 8, I believe. But only if his back is to you. And even then, I don't know if it'll catch Olimar. Because the way he rises with it. Okay, so what's his next fast option? 14. He has to 11 frames of shield drop into a frame 3 jab. Or a... I don't know what frame his standing grab is, but I think with shield drop or something, it's like... With the shield drop, it's like frame 14 shield grab or something like that. It's terrible, right? Like, it, it might even be worse. You're gonna be... You can pressure his shield very consistently. You can mix him up. If he hits your shield with like a down tilt, you fare his ass. If he jabs your shield, 1, 2, 3, rapid jab, you hit him. If he does anything that's not a fair... Or a Nair on your shield, you hit him. Yeah, he's going to kill me early and he can pressure pretty well. But at the same time, I can also call him out. I can kill him really early. And I can also make him play this, like, approach game while he's taking all this chip damage. Biggest thing, another big thing, watch out for substitute. It's it's like witch time almost. Where it will slow you down. Like, he's over here. He's got a Pikmin on him. You're right here. And he substitutes here. It'll slow you down here. He'll teleport to you and attack. So you, you got to be a bit smart about how you substitute. But if you read his substitute... And you whistle back, my man's eating a smash. It's so laggy. So yeah, pressure shield. Pressure Greninja shield. He can't do anything about it. It's so sad. Dude, you can up smash Greninja shield for days. <laughs> you, can, you can up smash Greninja shield fresh with a purple, stale once with a purple, and then even stale twice with a purple and still be able to shield before his jab comes out. You can, you kind of gotta, once again, match his tempo. Be ready to fight him. Call him out on his things. Don't let him just jump around for free. It's gonna be way harder. So I think, I think even once again, very volatile. He can play a bit aggressive on you. He can get some disastrous combos. Good confirms. But I mean, same thing. Dude, I've killed Greninja's at 80-something percent with up throws. Ice Climbers. That's strong advantage. We kind of just shit on Ice Climbers. Yellow is really good. They're, they're kind of like, so they don't have a good way to approach. They're not fast, so when they're approaching, it's either like a side B, which I believe their side B loses our forward smash. A blizzard, which is pretty good if they desync blizzard, but all you gotta do is snipe the top of their head with a side B, like a purple side B. You're, um, you've now put them in, in, in a state where now you have advantage and now you're dealing with them. Or you catch their F smash while they're falling or while they're starting up. And with good SDI, you're gonna get out of blizzard probably. So they struggle to approach. When you hit them, your Pikmin linger so long that it's easy to put big block strings on them. They don't have the best out of shield options. They can't edge guard that well, in my opinion, from playing against them. They, they have these very small hitboxes when you're off stage, so you can kind of mix up very well. So yeah, if they touch you, they could probably get some real disastrous stuff if they do their desyncs right. But they gotta touch you, and that's hard. Ike, oh, you guys know how I feel about Ike. Uh, that's definitely even. It's it's an annoying matchup, but the patch didn't really change much for Olimar. I feel in this matchup, he is not really edge guarding you that much. I actually played Big D at Genesis, um, and that was so wild. That was so long ago, so it's very different now. But I did play me when I see Zan DDD. But um, yeah, so Ike solid kill confirms once again. He falls there, so he doesn't rise with him. So you can catch him. Uh, you kind of got to play it safe. Know when you, you know, play campy. Give him that chip damage. Make him approach. He's not the fastest. Just respect his big hitboxes. Honestly, it's really only even in my opinion because he has such good confirms. Like, Nair's so hard to deal with at times. And he gets very solid confirms off it. And it's very easy for him to just, like, F-tilt, up-tilt, back air, something. And you just die. But we can play it in neutral where it's very stressful for him as well to approach if we're smart about it. Uh, he doesn't have the best options when he's on a platform because we're kind of pressuring him. As long as we don't just let him follow the Nair. Um, 
And both our recoveries are somewhat good. Like, his side B can be hard to catch, but at the same time, he's also more about ledge trapping than offstage edge guarding us because we have so much mobility. So I think another just one of those very volatile matchups. It's very similar to how the game when the first started. His out-of-shield options aren't the best. I think he might be able to up B now a bit easier, but other than that, you aren't pressuring Ike's shield too, too much. Very similar to, like, Ganon in Charizard. He's just... Like, a lot of these characters in the strong advantage spot, they're just too bad at approaching. Like, he's probably the best... Bowser Jr. is probably the best, but he suffers in other areas, I feel. And even then, his biggest approach loses the uh, F-Smash. Incineroar struggles to approach. He's got good hitboxes when he's up close, don't get me wrong. His down tilt is pretty good, it sets up for combos, his aerial is very good, up air is pretty good, and air is really good. But, uh, how's he approaching? Like, he's really struggling to get in. And as long as you're not just, like, foolishly trying to challenge him, you play it really lame, really smart, it's gonna be tough. It might go down to slight advantage at some point. I definitely don't see it being even. But it's fine if he kill it's it's fine if he kills Pikmin. Alright, let's say I'm fighting an Incineroar and we're on a big stage and I'm throwing Pikmin. He's nairing them. Okay, now I have purples. Now I approach. And now Incineroar loses. Because Incineroar can't do anything about nobody can do anything about purples. It's, unless you're like Rosalina and you just downbeat them. While I think you can't approach necessarily freely because his neutral be the uh, Dark Slary, it's very good. It's like a good get off me option. You can poke it from below because his legs are vulnerable. You can hit, I believe you can hit his head on it. Just be smart around him. Around him, it's pretty scary, but he has a slower run speed than Olimar. And that's saying something because our man's pretty damn slow. I think he actually has the worst run speed. So it's hard for him to catch you. So you kind of just get a bunch of chip damage. And when he revenges, well, one of you whistle it back. That's a free punish. But also, if he revenges a Pikmin, yeah, that's pretty scary, right? But there's some there's some upsides to it, kind of. One, if Pikmin ticks do 28% on him alone, his revenge goes away. Another, if he attacks to get a Pikmin off, when he has revenge and he hits that Pikmin, his revenge goes away. You can kind of balance it out that way. Counters have never really been a big bane for Olimar, as much as people like to think on Pikmin. They're not as bad as they think. Off stage, if you're smart, you can edge guard him. Like he, like they like to recover high and like up B and finish it right before the ledge. You just F smash off stage and hit him, or they side B the ledge, you just F smash them. Like there's a lot of ways to do that. You kind of just box him up close, just be careful of his up close options. But really, you're gonna camp him a lot, and then when you touch him, you're gonna combo him and you're gonna rinse and repeat, and you're gonna have a lot easier time hitting him with your kill moves like back air and grab. Then he's gonna have you hitting him with his, unless he's making some some good reads. Um, that's really what it comes down to. If he's making reads. Yeah, he's gonna side B you. He's gonna darkest layer at you. He's gonna hit you with this. The scary stuff. I've played Magister. I think I've beaten Magister every single time. And he's definitely gotten much better at the matchup over, over time. But I still think a strong advantage is very hard for Incineroar to get in and do much. Like, if he gets in, yeah. Like, a lot of these characters, but good luck getting in. And even then, outside of Darkest Lariat, I think he's all single hit moves. So that's that's premier whistle material. Inkling's definitely an annoying character. They have solid shield pressure with things like uh, back air. I think it's minus three. Very good. But... It's one of those, oh, it's minus three, so now we're mixing things up, right? It's like, what are they going to do? Are they going to grab? Are they going to jab? Are they going to back air again? Um, it's not like a true, true block string in the sense of the word, right? So, wow, they have that, yeah. What else do they have? Well, their up throw up air doesn't really work because of whistle. Their fair off stage is, while pretty good, it's not the end of the world. You can oftentimes fair that. Your aerials can challenge stairs, especially back air. Like, your yellow bear, pff, you're going to blow the water out of theirs. Um, in neutral, you're going to get a lot of chip damage from side B. Your side B can actually uh, block their splat bomb. If you if you have it right on their face, and you side B, it, if it's like in the right position, it can actually catch splat bomb right as they throw it, and then it explodes right there. And it's like a wasted splat bomb. Roller's obviously scary. That's another one of those that they catch you with roller. Doesn't really matter who is... Doesn't really matter who, who the Inkling's fighting against. If you get rollered, you're going to get a punish, so you need to get a mashing. But in neutral, it's like a lot of them trying to get you. They're getting their combos. Yeah, but how do they kill? Well, up throw up air doesn't really work because you can whistle it. They got to knock you off stage and try and hit you with a fair or a bear. Okay, well, that's more of a back and forth thing. And you've got a solid recovery, so you can juke them because they have a very lingering fair. And then, like, roller or a hard read smash. So they're trying to play this constant catch-up game, and you're getting just as much, if not more, off your combos. You kill with way more stray things. If you shield a, if you shield a roller, free up smash. Or you can F smash and it'll trade with it at least, right? So if you do get rolled, they get knocked away. You can semi-reliably two-frame their recovery with down tilt, down air, and down smash. You can just, you know, there's a lot of different ways to handle it. So I think Olimar takes the edge in it because he's got more ways to handle it. And while Inkling has good shield pressure and good combos, very much struggles to kill. And it's going to take a lot of that, like, secondary or that passive percent while the match is going on. So yeah, Inkling, definitely a side advantage for Olimar. Can do it, it's just tough. 200%, yeah, the buzz is living mad long in low tier city, and Inkling, once again, <laughs> they don't have a kill throw, really, uh, it's, it, with, with smart positioning, so it's, it's rough. 
I'm torn between slight advantage and strong advantage. The reasons being, Isabel doesn't have the same luxury as Villager. Um, I think she suffers because she doesn't have a Lloyd Rocket. She kind of she has the one that she plants on the ground, and that's pretty terrible because that's not applying forward-facing pressure. Um, so what she's left to do is kind of just slingshot a lot, and you can challenge her in the air. Olimar can challenge the hell out of Villager and Isabel in this game. Our aerials are better, in my opinion. Uh, we can do them in every direction. Yellow's range is some of the stupidest stuff I've ever seen. So yeah, Villager, in this game, is kind of going to be a lot of I'm throwing things, she's throwing things, but mm, I'm throwing more than she's slingshotting, right? And her slingshot's very here, here, here. I'm like, throw this way, throw that way, throw that way, right? I'm covering all these different areas. And while if I'm off stage, her, her slingshot can be pretty devastating, don't get me wrong. Um, I also think her edge guarding is worse because she doesn't have bowling ball. So that's kind of a, another lack of option that she can't cover this space. I think her Lloyd Rocket is worse, or her, like her planted Lloyd thing is worse um, than the, the normal Lloyd Rocket. The Fishing Rod is pretty good in some ways, but at the same time, if I shield it, I'm not too worried about it. Um, and if she whiffs it, I, I found rather good consistency in getting in and punishing her. Whereas the tree can be a little annoying, and the axe does become a new kill option for Villager. So with her, she just struggles to get in a lot. If she pockets the Pikmin, yeah, it's kind of annoying and it'd be a kill move, but it's not the end of the world. Like, you just be smart about avoiding it. Because um, when, when they pocket a Pikmin, it retains its throw arc. So, whereas like a red would go like that, right? A yellow would go like that. So if she pockets the yellow, I can be relatively close to her and not worry about getting yellowed because it's going to go over me. So there's different ways you can exploit that. Fishing rod off stage? I mean, yeah, but once again, Olimar has so much mobility with offstage, and she's probably better off going out there with slingshots to hit Olimar offstage. Um, but yeah, no, I would agree with that. It's slight advantage for Olimar's favor. She can do it, it's just tough. It's it's very tough for her, I think, uh, in some areas. Um, but it's not it's not the end of the world. It's no, it's no strong advantage, right? Like, a lot of these characters, inside advantage, they can do it. It's kind of just tough in, in some ways. Next up, we got Joker! Boy, do I not like this dude. But it's even. Um... So, I don't think Joker beats Olimar because he's not a sword character. He doesn't have the, the legitimate beats Olimar strength, in my opinion. He's got really good things, really good things, right? But it's, like, dumb. They're, like, dumb good things. They're not like, oh, I win the matchup now. They're like, I got countered because I'm stupid and didn't expect it to do that, right? Very volatile matchup. If you're really good about your up B, you can actually somewhat gimp Joker his you can if you dare his his uh tether he's probably dead if he has our sin you can so easily down tilt it his ledge snap that you're consistently hitting him and since it doesn't have hitbox if he goes past the ledge he's still getting down tilted so it gives you a semi-reliable way to hit him when he's off stage yeah annoying but doable is is right up right up the alley i think the biggest thing he has is his combos are all right you can actually whistle out of a good amount of things his up airs, I find whistling out of those semi-consistently. Just be careful about rolling and dodging because the smash stacks are very strong. When he has our sin, it's very... Yeah, yeah, he can... So, I'll actually talk about uh, his, his Rebel's Guard real quick. So yeah, Pikmin tick every 37-ish frames or something like that, right? So I throw a Pikmin, but they have to wait. When I throw them, they don't immediately tick. So I throw them, I can actually whistle them back, and then he's stuck in Rebel's Guard lag. And then I can grab him. So there's a bunch of, like, if you're smart about it, you can get a bunch of different punishes off of it. Or sometimes, if he is about to have our sin, I can just let him take that damage. And then when he, like, finishes Rebel's Guard, get a free grab. Because I'm pressuring, but I don't, I'm not actually committing when I have the Pikmin on him. So I'm able to punish certain um, times with that. His normals, he's got good mobility, but his hitboxes are rather modest when he doesn't have our sin. And that's good, because his, his bear while all right, his fair while all right, they're not massive. When he has our sin... It's something else, right? It's very annoying. His hitboxes are massive. Bear is extremely difficult to do anything about. He just goes with you. He's faster than you. That can be pretty bad. And I think Arsene is why it's even. But as long as you're smart, you treat it kind of like how we treated Bayo in Smash 4. How we would treat, uh, you know, Greninja Substitute, but much less dangerous. Or much more dangerous. Um, it's like, you kind of bait things out with a counter. You be smart about it. You don't just attack willy-nilly. You kind of outplay him in the neutral. Because his approach options are meh. His side B, while annoying because it covers distances, you can block it, you can dodge it. You can still get a lot of chip damage. And that chip damage, that burns Arsen really quickly. One back throw with Olimar, like a three Pikmin blue fresh back throw does 23%, right? That's going to take a, a... That'll give him Arsen, sure. But that'll also take a serious chunk out of it. 
So you're able to kind of take away and give it really well if you're smart about it. And in neutral, he doesn't have the best approach option. So really mixing up your neutral, even with Arsene, you're keeping it relatively even. And while he kills you easily, you also kill him very easily. You can exploit, you can ledge trap him and edge guard him somewhat reliably while he goes out there and he deep edge guards you. So it's very volatile once again. You kill each other very easily, especially when it's Arsene. But without Arsene, I definitely think Olimar is the advantage. Jigglypuff. <laughs> I think we already knew that was going there. This could go to slight advantage in the future, but like... You, the only way Puff has an advantage in this matchup is if, or the, the the Puff can really make this matchup better, is if this Puff is, and I mean, ridiculous at edge guarding. You gotta really do it, because in neutral, I got swords. I threaten shield breaks. I, like, I will kill you mad early. You can't challenge me in the air that well. It's not like Smash 4, right? I can whistle a lot of things. I was fighting, I was fighting Speckler, a Puff player, and he forwarded me. And he goes to rest, and I whistled rest. And we both landed, and Puff died. So being smart off stage can go a long way. And, you know, you're going to challenge Puff a lot easier. It's hard for Puff to approach. So outside of, like, really good off stage pressure, it's not easy at all. And Pivot Grab works wonders against Puff, because the way they approach, they have to land on you a lot. Ken is hella annoying in this game. Post-patch? Post I definitely put it to even. I actually lost to Sandstorm's Ryu. And I'll talk about both of them separately. Um, I lost to Sandstorm's Ryu. That's because I'm dumb. In my opinion. I, not, not not to take away from him. He's obviously good. I just let him walk all over me. Ken and Ryu both have solid hitboxes. Ken, Ryu's are a bit more beefy and scary. Ken's more about, like, real quick build up the damage. And then he's got, like, his Shoryu not having sour spots really good. But at the same time, like, he can also struggle to approach. You want to use your sword aerials, especially yellows, to kind of catch him. Um, edge guarding him, you can do it somewhat reliably. You can dare his Shoryu now if you're really smart about it. That's another one of those really volatile matchups. Post patch definitely did them favors, and it also kind of hurt us because we lost some of the shield pressure. I don't know their exact frame data, but it made it a bit tougher for us just because we can't up smash them as much. But they don't really exploit us off stage that much, so just like taking it slow, watching out, blocking their hadokens with stuff or dodging them, and then trying to get your chip damage. And then when they get in, you know, you catch them committing to something, you make them hit a pick, and then they have lag. Then you get a grab combo, or you get a tilt into an aerial or something like that. Yeah, I know the DI for sure. You. Um, but you fight them differently. Good SDI is really important against them. But I think because it's so volatile, like you're, like they're not a glass cannon. But against Olimar, you kind of turn them into a glass cannon. You're like, you hit hard, but I hit just as hard with a lot more things, right? I kill you very easily. So you, it's kind of a back and forth. Except you can get more chip damage if you're smart about it, and you're really able to abuse the stage layout to dodge their things like Hadoken and Tatsumaki's. Uh, I'll talk about Ryu real quick because they're echoes. Ryu, same thing, um, except he's a bit more beefy, less multi-hits. Um, you just got to watch out for certain things. They got a bunch of different ways to confirm into the shore use and stuff like that. Ryu's a little bit scarier because he... Well, scarier in some ways. It's good that he his shore you has a sour spot at the top, but also worse because like, it can be scarier up close. But he's also... His Hadouken's a little bit more annoying, the, the fire one. I don't remember what it's called. Um, that'll lose the purples and F smashes, so you just want to handle that. Camp him, he's slower than Ken, so he can struggle to get in. But when he's in, it's a little bit scarier. But I think they're both relatively even, even because they're such glass cannons uh, when fighting Olimar. And you just really need to abuse your range, try and pivot grab them. Whites are going to be really good to get their grabs against them when they're approaching, if they want to approach the aerials or things like that. Um, and just being careful and not rolling and not holding shield willy nilly. You gotta be very precise in everything you do, and it all has to be very deliberate so you don't get caught slipping, because they'll blow you if you're getting caught slipping. DDD kind of just sucks <laughs> against Olimar, in my opinion. He, his Gordo, loses all our aerials. Purple side B beats it. Um, he's heavy. You know, you can dare his up B semi consistently. In neutral, like, yeah, his tilts are pretty good, but. If you catch him with one move, you're going to go on a ride with him. But, like, it's tough. And, yeah, if he if he inhales a side B, it'll shoot it back out. But if he inhales a forward smash or any smash, he's in so much lag. Like, enough to where you can just smash him again. So what you do is you kind of bait out the side B inhale, and then you just F smash him, and then you run up and smash him again. And he gets mad punished. And then now it's like, well, what's, what's he doing? <laughs> right? And then there's actually a glitch where um, if DDD inhales a side B and he shoots it back out on your shield, and you shield it and then pick the Pikmin back up before it hits the ground and dies, like with an aerial or with a whistle or whatever, and you throw it, even if it's not purple, it has knockback. Wait, his his ledge trapping is probably his best bet, best area, so it's a bit tough. But like, how is he getting you there? It's really hard as long as you're not messing up. His shield pressure is not the best. Um, so you can really pressure him well. You can whistle his things like his up tilt, and then when you catch him, you're going to punish him pretty hard. Um, you can down smash, down tilt, down air his up B pretty easily. When he's snapping ledge, if he goes past it, you can probably dodge it. So it's it's tough for him because he's so slow. Worst air speed in the game. I'd put slight advantage. I think he 
unlike the other super heavies and strong advantage, he's more in line with the, the slight advantage ones where he still struggles, but he's got more of a fleshed out kit, similar to like Bowser and DK up close, I feel, where like his tools work pretty well, he's got some good combos, like down air into stuff, or his grab stuff at higher percent. Crown's pretty annoying. The armor can help him uh, as well. Down smash can jump over some of your attacks if you try to grab and he reads it. Um, it's still tough for him because he can't approach, but if you play it pretty safe. But like when he's up close, it's not too, too bad. And his recovery is the hardest to deal with because you can trade with it with a dare or beat it if you have the right colors, but it's very inconsistent. And I find it almost always sour spots with the dare, so he'll probably just still come back. So it's tough. So you got to kind of let him come back and then just outplay him over and over again. Um, but just standard heavy character, kind of slow, combo food. He lives a while and he can kill you somewhat easily. He's got some good stuff because of the armor and the crown, but still very tough for him, I feel. Kirby, right in the strong advantage. Um, similar to Olimar, or <laughs> similar to DDD, terrible approach options. Um, like bad approach options. Slow as hell. Dash attacks R8, zone breaker. Good SDI is going to help you a lot with things like down air too. I think it can help minimize some of their punishes. Kirby dies easily. You can edge guard him somewhat reliably with a down air and stuff like that. But if Kirby gets your power with inhale, it's kind of frustrating just because of how much like the power can be annoying, but it's tough. Mixing up parries and kind of using verticality to hurt Kirby can make that a lot less effective because Kirby can't... One, the Pikmin are stuck in a set, set arcs when they're thrown relevant or um, relative to their color you can only use three of them immediately without having a short cooldown and you also can't throw in the air as kirby so those are a few weaknesses of it that you can use to help get in and punish um and when you're in kirby has some already boxing options but you had a lot harder kirby's out of shield game is all right i feel but it's just kind of like you zone kirby out if he doesn't have it and it's hard for him to get in you just play it really lame and make him approach and he takes so much chip damage that he's just gonna slowly lose link this is an interesting one I'm torn between a little even or slight advantage. Because, like, Link has all right moves. He has decent out of shield options. And he kills somewhat easily, and he's got good range, so that might be why he's even. But I feel like he doesn't have any outstanding things. But I guess I'll put him in even, just because, like, the nerf to our shield pressure made it a little bit more frustrating. He So he's going to be using a lot of bomb stuff. The bomb, when it drops, it has multiple hitboxes when it falls. He can use things like boomerang and arrows to, to try and pressure from a distance. And he's got good hitboxes. His bear is super safe. His nair, I think, is pretty safe. Um, you can actually challenge his down air with a yellow up air. You might be able to do other colors of up air, but yellow especially if you're smart about it. So you can challenge him when he's falling. Um, you just gotta be careful of certain things like his up be out of shield, his up be off stage. They can kind of suck you up and you can die very early. Um, so I would probably keep this even just kind of because of the volatility of it. And now he can kind of trap you in certain areas. But I don't see him edge guarding you that much. He's more so carried by his decent mobility, somewhat solid shield pressure, and absurdly high kill power. Um, and a couple of the setups, but I can see this going to slight advantage in the future. Like, Olimar's going to be blocking a lot of stuff with Pikmin. He's going to be getting a lot of chip damage from it. He's going to be comboing him somewhat all right. I mean, you're going to be playing a very, like, back-and-forth neutral game, I feel. I, I don't know. This doesn't feel like there's too many talking points to it. It's not like a young Link where I feel like I have much more to say on how, like, Olimar handles it. It just feels very back-and-forth because Link has good range um, and, solid, and solid stuff like that. And he's got good kill power to back it up, too, so when he does hit you, it matters a lot more. Little Mac, well, you already know where that's going. That is, that is a strong advantage for Olimar. I mean, Little Mac... <laughs> Like, it's another one of those classic, like, you might as well treat Little Mac like a super heavy, right? Like, if he gets in, hella scary. Well, how's he getting in? You know, are you, how are you messing up? How are you letting him get in? Right? Like, I know the buffs helped him, but even then, he's super gimpable. Your aerials now just beat everything every time. Uh, unlike, unlike Smash 4. Um, your grab is super good, especially whites. Purples, if you hit him with a purple, it gets rid of KO Punch. So you can kind of just play it safe. You can whistle a lot of his landing uh, traps, like the Smash, you just whistle him. So just like play it safe, play it lame, treat him like a low tier, and it's gonna be very hard for him to get in. If he gets in, sure, it's frustrating, but just like know what you're doing, know how to DI, know when to whistle, know how to parry. It's gonna take you a long way. And then know how to edge guard him too, like know how to like hit his down, uh, like hit his up B, hit his side B, and things like that, so that he's not being able to mix up his recovery that well. Lucario, I think slight advantage. Um, doesn't really have a good approach option, I feel. We can block Aura Sphere pretty well. The counter can be a bit annoying on side B because it kind of teleports him as well and it's got good speed. But really, the only reason I don't have him in strong advantage is just because when he gets aura, it's so scary. But getting aura, you're going to get it pretty fast, but you also kill him pretty early. And you can edge guard him rather reliably. Like If, he's goes, if he goes to the ledge, it's very easy to hit. If he goes around and you read it, because I, I personally find intercepting Lucario's up B is rather easy because you can usually tell how they want to recover based on their position and how the match has been going. And you can intercept that almost all the time, even with smash attacks. So it's rather consistent to hit. 
Um, and he has some decent options up close, like his tilts and like nair and dare and stuff like that. But it's not too big of a problem. Just understanding how to like handle him. If you when you give him to those high percents, if you're throwing Pikmin and approaching, all you gotta do is whistle them back, bait out a counter, and he's dead. And he doesn't have much of a way to challenge you because a lot of his pressure is very either up close, self-contained, or it's like very it's like a straight line, kind of like his high, high percent force palms, right? So I think slight advantage, definitely keeping him relative. It's just how crazy he can kill you when he does get that aura and how you can get it to him pretty fast. Lucas. Slight advantage. Character's just annoying. It, like, it wouldn't matter if he was losing, winning, whatever. Character's annoying to fight. His Zare, frustrating, yeah. His PK fire, frustrating, yeah. His aerial's pretty safe on shit. He's got a lot of safe aerials, I, I'm pretty sure. But, the nice thing is, PK fire doesn't beat reds. Throw a red on him, he PK fires, poof, nothing, nothing explodes right in his face. Right? And then now his pressure has disappeared and you're able to get him. And you can get a lot more chip damage because of that. He also suffers from a lot of single hit moves, which means Whistle is rather insistent on getting around him. Using your own aerials to catch him, especially when he's on the ground. When he's on the ground, he wants to jump. If you're kind of spacing around that and being ready, you can fare him, retreating fair and catch him before he jumps. And then just kind of like, it's a very back and forth game. You're just going to throw a bunch of stuff at him, get a bunch of chip damage, get your straight aerials, and then you're going to catch him with a kill move. Um, like a throw or a back air or a smash and when he's off stage you can try and down air down tilt his recovery but I think the reason it's slight advantage instead of strong is that his recovery can be kind of hard to get he, he can actually kill you really easily uh, if he down smashes at the ledge it's pretty solid his PK freeze to catch you one of those you're probably gonna die he's got some kill throws still uh, his aerials while pretty good he's got two different ways to spike and he can kind of go deep with Olimar I feel and he's he's like his boxing options are very good. He outboxes Olimar. He's got I think a frame two jab, a frame three or four, something like that, down to that he can spam. He's got good options up close that are rather hard to challenge. So I think it's slight advantage, not main advantage, not strong advantage, just because of how his aerials work. But uh, like and how he can kind of poke you and, and prod it and kind of keep it going from there. But he's definitely playing like a losing battle because you're getting so much more chip damage with Olimar, and a lot of your moves just hit harder. Oh, the big one. <sighs> so Lucina. Slight disadvantage. The nerfs really didn't do us any favors in this. So yeah, she did get nerfed as well. She lost some forward air and forward smash kill power. However, our nerfs were much more impactful. Um, one, our hurt box is large on our helmet. So now she's going to be able to hit us easier, especially things like falling up air. Our up smash is even worse, although she could always up smash us. She could always up be out of shield our up smash. However, now with our recovery worse and her... Like, she already had a solid out of shield game against us. The neutral is very back and forth. But now she can pressure our shield a little bit easier with her falling aerials, I feel. And she can exploit our recovery very well. Because unlike a lot of other characters, her aerials are quick and powerful. And she can go out there. She's not a fast faller or anything like that. She doesn't have these long sweeps. So she can pester us over and over and over again. And it's got good kill power. And I think that's a slight disadvantage because she can really press it off stage now because we don't have as much fuel. We recharge it so much slowly, so much slower. Uh, and we, we struggle to kill a little bit more because of the F smash nerf, but that's not a too big deal. But really, she's the difference between like her and Krom, for instance, is just that while they both have solid neutral, they can kill somewhat reliably, she's like really the only character that can go out there and kind of keep playing this back and forth game. And like, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to hit you. And it's going to matter. And I think that's the only reason she has a slight advantage on Olimar. Because in neutral, it's very back and forth. You can kill her somewhat easily. You can actually juggle her decently, just like she can you. But you can't really hit her shield reliably. And she can edgeguard you pretty pretty hard. Luigi. So I actually didn't have really any practice in this matchup at top level. Um, until recently. I played Elegant in a money match. Uh, actually, at Low City this past weekend. It was game five. He managed to clutch it out. And I learned some things. And then I saw how DeBuzz was fighting him. And I, I kind of just like looked more at it. And I would say it's... I'm in a torn between like slight advantage, even isk thing. I want to say slight advantage because you should, in theory, be able to camp Luigi very hard. He he's slow, and if he wants to kill Pikmin, it's going to get you purples. And if, yeah, he can kill purples too. You know, then you can start approaching, and you can pressure him somewhat reliably. The biggest things about Luigi that keep him relevant are he's very destructive when he touches you. Obviously, his grab is very good. He's got grab to up B, grab to down B, grab to bear. His bear is, or his down B is a super good get off me. It's frame one invincible. So you have to be a bit more conservative with your combos and your hits. So like, you can't get very greedy. He's slow. His air is pretty good as well because it kind of lingers and hits Pikmin. And so it's a weird interaction. You know, you're going to play it slow. You're going to play it campy. You're going to kind of keep hitting him away with things like like fair and bear and use like the maximum amount of your disjoint and kind of play a very high chip game. Yeah, Luigi's air is pretty good. I could see it being an even, but right now I feel weird putting an even. I feel like maybe. Olimar mains just aren't abusing the matchup the right way. I definitely, it, like, it, it's volatile for sure, but I just, I, 
it, right now I wouldn't feel comfortable putting it even because I feel like he doesn't have enough tools to really get in on Olimar. Like he's not really in there boxing fighting you, right? He's kind of got like almost like a Dr. Mario-esque, like yeah, up close it's scary, but like why is Luigi on top of you? He's slow, you know? That type of thing. Mario, so this is even. I actually thought this was slightly winning for Olimar pre-patch because we killed a bit easier with that smash. Um, he's always been able to punish. I think Mario has the best or tied for the best uh, out of shield options in the game without me being frame three. So no matter post patch, free patch doesn't matter. He's up. He's up being out of shield to be smart about it. I and mean, that's not the biggest thing. The biggest thing is he juggles you pretty. He juggles you pretty well. And now with our nerfed up B off stage, Mario can go pretty deep as well, similar to Lucina, and bury you and things like that, and keep knocking you off stage until you just can't recover. Uh, and that's a lot more detrimental when you have less gas. However, the reason it's even and not disadvantage for Olimar is he doesn't have a disjoint. So, he's not able to exploit it nearly as easily as, like, Lucina. He can do it, but it's not super bad. I think it's helped him some, but it's not like Lucina, where it's a constant disjoint that helps her a lot. Like, he has safe pressure on your shield, but he has a much harder time getting in. Similar to the other two Mario variants, you know, like Luigi and then Dr. Mario, up close it's a problem, but he gets up close a little bit more because he has the high speed. However, you're able to, like, mix up pairing, you can anti-air him a lot easier. I find... You know, Mario to be a... He's less scary than the two up, the, the other two versions because they're so much more destructive with kill power. He's much more toned down, but fast. And that's good. I'd rather have the speed than the power. Or, well, that's not true. It was, if, you had the, if you didn't have the speed, you could camp him. But because he lacks the power and he has the speed, that means the hits are much less impactful. So you just need to watch out for a few select moves. And it's a very back-and-forth game. You're getting rack up. You're getting your chip damage. You're getting your decent combos on him. You can even exploit him off stage. He's got a somewhat exploitable recovery. If you can catch a down air, things like that or catch him with a downer when he's trying to up B or something like that. And But his combos are very good. He can somewhat edgeguard you offstage decently. Very volatile, back and forth. Nothing super polarizing. You kill him, he kills you with your own unique type of thing. Similar to almost like Falcon, how it's very back and forth. And not so much like a or like a Peach, as opposed to something like a, an Ike, where you kind of just blow each other up. Marth, uh, slight advantage. So the tipper discrepancy is so big that it it's almost unfair. Lucina is so good because she doesn't ever, like, someone like Chrom doesn't have the space for things to be super strong, right? And without the tippers, I think he kills like 40% later or something like that. So if he's not hitting tippers, it doesn't matter if he's hitting me off stage nearly as much, it's not a problem. And they're not going to hit tippers a lot. So they're just struggling to kill you and you're living to mad percents. And without that advantage of being able to kill you early and constantly apply these, because their aerials are going to be less safe because they're less strong. It's a lot easier to deal with him. He's not pressuring near, nearly as scary. His edge guards are much less effective. While they're still good, you're not dying nearly as late. Things like that, right? And that that takes you... Like, the human error element makes it so much less viable for Marth. Um, so I think slight advantage. It's very similar. The neutral's somewhat the same, except Olimar is going to get a lot more per exchange than Marth is, because he's got to hit unless he's hitting tippers. Mega Man, even matchup. It's very back and forth. This is one of those, like... It's one of those, like... I throw a bunch of things at him, he throws a bunch of things at me. And Mega Man's out of shield game is actually really good. Up smashes, I think, frame six or eight, and then back here is like one of the other six or eight or something like that too. I think it's I think it's eight. But it's like he's got solid out of shield options. And his pellets and stuff like that can be very annoying and neutral. So you're both kind of doing a lot of chip damage. The main difference is Mega Man doesn't so much combo you uh with stuff a lot, whereas you do to him. When you touch him, he's big combo food, right? Um so you're kind of like throwing back and forth. He's more disrupting you a lot. And he's got some combos. He can edge guard somewhat decently with back air and things like that off stage. But it's a lot of like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, poke you until you find the kill move with like a smash or an aerial or something like that. Um, what does Mega Man? Well, you can't hit a shield or else he's going to up smash you. It's very back and forth. gets a lot of chip damage until one of you gets in. And then I find Olimar to be more disruptive when he gets in. But it can be a bit harder for Olimar to get in because pellets are so disruptive and they can stop a lot of your attacks. Pairing isn't super like consistent of dealing with lemons because they're multi like there's three of them. Very standard back and forth matchup. Nothing super crazy. Just don't hit his shield willy nilly. Are you gonna get up smash? Try and explode his recovery with down tilts, down airs, things like that. The usual stuff. And then just play your game. Go for a lot of chip damage. Don't rush it. You can't rush getting in on Mega Man, or else you're just going to make it a lot worse than it needs to be. You kind of got to take your time, be patient, and find your openings when you get them. Meta Knight. I think it's a an even matchup, especially post patch. I thought it was before. But especially now, I don't think it had enough to go to disadvantage for Olimar. Um, because while the dis the up B nerf definitely hurt us, um, and I think the shield damage, the shield safety nerf did some as well. Up till it might be frame 6, but you have 11 frames of shield drop, so it's not too big of a problem. Yeah, Meta Knight has good offstage presence, but you can juke him pretty well. I fought quite a few different Meta Knights, 
And if you're smart about your recovery, it's a lot better. The ladder combos can be pretty frustrating. It's one of those very volatile, very explosive. You kill Meta Knight super early, like super early, just like he does to you. He's got his ladder combos. He's got his off stage edge guards. You've got your, you know, up throws, your back airs, your edge guards. You can down air him on stage. You can up, you know, down smash him. You can kill him with up air really easy. It's so easy to catch him and then he just dies. Um, so while he's up to you, you do it to him. It's very back and forth. On stage, the neutral Olimar definitely dictates. Off stage, Meta Knight's got the bit of an upper hand, but Olimar can still navigate it pretty well, especially if you have purples to throw and you can kind of force him to deal with a certain option. So I think it's just a very back and forth. On stage, he wins. Or on stage, you win. Off stage, he wins. And that's what you got to be able to do. you got to be able to like work that really well and not let him get for get you off stage for free. Mewtwo. Definitely a, definitely a winning matchup for Olimar. Just by question of how much. He does have a big frame, and he dies very early. But I feel like he's got good speed and he's got some right hitboxes. I think kind of annoying. I would say slight advantage um, because yeah, he has a big frame and all that, but his kill power is pretty good uh, and he can be pretty mobile and with, like he's got some decent combos as well. He's kind of held back by how big his frame is, just like his lack of super super good frame data. Just being careful about things, not overextending, not letting him like fare you for free, and being careful about shadow ball and things like disable or confusion or whatever is going to take you a long way. Don't don't throw out smashes willy nilly. Um, and he's just going to be struggling to get in. Honestly, if his frame was better, it, I don't even know. I don't even know if like they reduced the tail hitbox that would make it even. Because I feel like his tools overall aren't enough to really dictate it. Like he can't just spam down tilt and shadow ball and fair and things like he couldn't smash for. So now he's got to play a lot more of a back and forth game, and that's where Olimar is really going to excel. He's going to get a lot more chip damage off of it, and he's going to be able to kill much easier. He's uh, like, you know, on Smash Four, Mewtwo's up throw was the like the the, the up throw. Well, now it's Olimar's up throw is the up throw, and he's very light, so you're going to be killing him very early. Uh, even with just a bunch of stray hits, whereas he might, he'll do it to you, but not to the same extent. Just be careful about his things like his up air and fa uh, back air and things like that. But well, that's where Whistle's going to get you a long way. You can whistle most everything, except for like up smash and um, nair. So the Mies are weird, because they do have the custom move sets. Um, I'm not going to talk about really the individual moves, unless I need to bring up a certain point about why that one is so much better. But I would say Me Fighter is slightly slightly losing. He's got good boxing options up close, but he doesn't have like the same like level of like oppressive frame data as like a Mario does. And he has some alright stuff. He, I know I fought um I fought some brawlers out there who use their specials pretty well, like the one up B that'll like spike you and all that stuff. Um, and they can be pretty pretty scary and oppressive and things like that. But at the same time, they can struggle to get in. They can be kind of comboish food, and they, you know, they don't have the best landing options either outside of like their down B flip kick flip kick type things and like that and you can honestly block out a lot of the rooms because a lot of their specials feel more gimmicky where like if they get you with it, it's really bad and it's gonna be really destructive but how are they getting you with it right like if they're gonna catch you with like the the raptor boost-esque like flurry punch thing into the thing well you can block that with a pikmin okay well they're gonna catch you with the upbeat thing it's very horizontal or it's very vertical based and you're not gonna get hit by that be smart about your positioning near the ledge so you can kind of outrange them in a lot of ways just Watch out for certain hitboxes. Up close is a bit scary. Respect them there. But make them struggle to get in and make the most out of your hits as opposed to them where you're going to be a lot more destructive. Helicopter kick stuff is definitely scary, but smart stage positioning could probably take you a long way in that. So I would say slight advantage. They can definitely do it, but it's not it's not the best. Gunner, I would say slight advantage as well. You can block a lot of the projectiles. Um, you know, it's a very back and forth game as well, but not to the same extent as Mega Man. I find she doesn't have its nearly easy way of like she because like Mega Man keeps it even because he's got the lemons. Like those are really disrupt very well, and he kind of keeps that mid range very good. Like he stops up smash. He doesn't let you press for free. You know, he's got the crash bomber, the metal blade, things like that to kind of keep you on your toes. And like Gunner has some stuff with that. Like her specials can be kind of annoying, like the pillar of flame or whatever, and the bombs and stuff like that. But you can block a good amount of those. You can get a lot of chip damage from like the 45 degree angles, like cross distance, where she can't necessarily handle it. And you're just going to be getting more out of it than she is, I feel. Um, and you're going to be uh, have an easier time getting it. I, I, from my experience, you know, I, this is a matchup that could change in the future. It might go to even, but I'm pretty hesitant about that. I feel like you're just going to be out projectiling her, and you're going to be punishing her a lot more. Um, and getting a lot more chip damage, and you're probably gonna kill it easier. Like she's got some decent options, sure. I know she has one really good up B that has like a solid uh, uh, like invincibility on it can kill. But, like just respecting that option. Don't go, don't get greedy off stage and go and try and edge guard her. Let her get back on ledge and then ledge trap her. Olimar does ledge trapping very well. Um, and you're going to have more kill power than her, so that's an important thing. And once you get purple, she doesn't have a great get off me option aside from maybe that up B, which then becomes a very obvious over polarizing option for her. And then now she's left without really anything else when you start baiting that out. Because when she does it, she's going to go into free fall, and you're probably going to be able to punish her. Me swordsman, the only me that I would put in even because tornado. 
Tornado isn't enough to make him win the matchup, but it's enough to make the matchup forcefully frustrating and a lot more work than it is. It will beat every projectile. Like, it's a transcendent set knockback move, right? So they're always comboing off it, assuming they space it properly. Um, and it's going to make you circum... Like, it makes you circumvent the standard neutral gameplay because instead of going right at them, now you have to go around. You have to parry. You have to delay your attacks. you got to use Pikmin in creative ways. Um, and he's got some right disjoints. And he's got some... Like, if he, like, does... I, I know you can fall out of it, but he does like tornado into the hero spin that can kill pretty early, um, and he's got a solid recovery with the uh, the spin side B move. Um, plus, he's got a reflector, so it's kind of just a very annoying slow matchup where you just chip him down and you get your openings and you kind of make the most out of it. Your yellows are better than his sword. Your purple side B is going to put him in a lot. It's going to create a big disadvantage if you catch him throwing a tornado and you go over it. It's going to be a lot better for you. But because he's got these things that makes you kind of play his game a lot of the way and kind of fight around it, and it can be deadly if he does it right. I'd say that keeps it even. Game and watch. Had to get out a shield option with that B, but I feel like because I feel like because he doesn't have the best the best approach option. Like he's got fair, but you can get rid of that with your attack. Bear's not really an approach option. A dash attack is somewhat predictable and shieldable, and then you can punish it. So what's he left with? How's he approaching? Okay, well if he's not approaching, then he's getting he's getting camped. And he's getting camped, you're getting a lot of damage with side B's. And if you're getting damage from side B's, that's either mean you're getting free damage or he's having to kill them. And if he's killing them, that's potentially giving you opportunities to hit them. Or it's giving you purples, and once you get purples, you can start approaching. And while Bucket does, and while Bucket does help him kind of repel those, you can throw Pikmin at angles where even if he buckets them, he's got to deal with all that animation. But it's going to reflect it at an angle where you're not going to be. So you're going to you're going to get a free punish. Uh, I think his only redeeming factors are he's got pretty good kill power. His out of shield options are good. So if you're very unsafe on a shield, or you hit him, or you mess up, or you don't do something perfect, or even if you do, you just might not be able to get away with certain things. He might just catch you then not be. So you got to be careful. You got to play it a bit slower. Um, he does kill very early, things like down smash into forward smash, up smash is pretty good. And I feel like he does disadvantage already against Olimar. The chef at the ledge can be kind of annoying, his up airs can be kind of annoying. But that is usually dealt with with smart, like, up B usage, like going around things, mixing up your air dodge, mixing up your roll timings, because that's what it's all about. And that's going to get you a lot farther. Like, if you're letting him get a lot off those, those disadvantage spots, it's going to make it feel more even. But you just really got to be smart about it, because that's what Olimar really does in a lot of situations when he's in disadvantage. It's like, take the one for the few options he has and really work them into a way that's going to help him a lot. Ness. I would say slight disadvantage as well. Um, another matchup that can get kind of scary. He's got really good frame rate up close. And if you're not handling PK fire well, it's going to be a lot more destruct destructive than it needs to be. However... If you're smart about it, you can kind of camp him out on bigger stages. You can kind of block a lot of projectiles with your own. Reds are going to go through PK fire. Um, you're getting a lot of chip damage. Up close, you can kind of use your swords. You just got to watch out for some of his aerials because he's got solid disjoints. I think it could go to even in the future. I don't want to put it there, though. Um, I think if you're aware of a lot of the tricks the Ness is going to employ, like a lot of his movement tech, like the Psy Magnet or the way he's double jump canceling with PK fire and things like that, it's going to be a bit harder for you. But... Overall, it's not too, too bad. You just kind of need to abuse certain things. When he comes in, you parry things, you get your punishes, you knock him off stage, and then you can try and edge guard him from there using down airs on his up or down tilting his up to the ledge, and uh, doing things like that. When you're on the bigger stages, when you have when he's kind of gotten wisened up how you're fighting, you kind of camp him out, make him approach, and then punish him for having to approach again, and just respect his different mix-ups and things he has for that. But it definitely could be even in the future. It's mainly kept close just because like i have an inside advantage um, the, the the things he has are he can juggle somewhat decently with his uh, pk thunders but and he's got good combos up close so he can edge trap pretty decently and he just has good kill power so you just need to respect certain options kind of like dr mario or luigi where like when you're up close it's really scary but generally you just try not to be up close but it could go to even just because he's got some good movement he could actually get closer to you i think if, it, if, if i need to see it more and how it develops and Dennis is really starting to push the limits of their character and how they're approaching and how they're doing that because if they can stick on you more it's gonna be a lot harder pac-man pac-man i hate this matchup i'm bad at this matchup i think the buzz is bad at this matchup but shutan shambles Pac-Man players, from what I've seen. So, I'm torn between even or side advantage. Like, I've seen it, and if you hit Pac-Man's shield, you're going to get hit. If you play it badly, you're going to get hit. But if you play it in a very reactive way and kind of force him to approach and get a lot of chip damage and then punish him as he's coming in, you can actually make it a lot better. I'm inclined to put it in even, though. But I could see it going to slight advantage. I just feel like Pac-Man's got enough ways to pester you, similar to Mega Man, where it's kind of like a back and forth, back and forth, and you can't really hit a shield reliably. And it's a very you kind of kind of play a bit slower of a game, play more reactionary, kind of based off of what your opponent does. But you also got to try and coerce them into fighting. You Pac-Man's got solid combos. He's kind of a pain in the ass to kill. He's got a good recovery. He's kind of heavy. 
So it, you definitely got to work for your wins, as does he. You know, he's got to find his openings. He's got to get his projectiles in there. He's got to get on you. And that's kind of hard when you have sword aerials, you have purples, things like that. And you're keeping each other out. So it's a very back and forth even fight, I feel, similar to Mega Man. There's a few projectile characters in the game like that that kind of like contest Olimar very well because their projectiles don't get outright beaten by Olimars, but they don't outright beat Olimar. It's like, all right, we're going to throw back and forth at each other until we stop doing it, until one of us loses. Palutena. Uh, this, I, I hate putting this matchup in, in slight disadvantage, but post patch. It's so much worse because our shield pressure is worse. So getting shield grab is a lot more likely. And her grab range is very good. So that becomes more problematic. And which before it was even, because you could kind of contest her neutral a bit easier. Advantage or her advantage state on you was very problematic. But now with the up B nerfs as well, every time you're getting hit with an air, it's becoming or a fair or whatever, it's becoming more and more problematic. Because you're burning more fuel and you're not getting it back nearly fast enough. So because you're getting shield grab a lot easier, which means you're getting put in disadvantage a lot easier, mixed with the fact that she already has a lot of good, easy pressure options that don't require much to do, and she's fast, it's just frustrating to fight. Olimar can still do decent and neutral. You just gotta be very careful about how you're approaching, what you're trying to punish, and things like that. But when she gets you off stage, it's kind of the big deciding factor, similar to Lucina, with RB nerfs and how good they are off stage. It's kind of our chances of making it back just shot down. And that's the big thing. Pichu, we win. The character hurts itself a lot in addition to our chip damage, so they get a lot of percent on themselves, and that puts them in KO percent earlier, and we kill them very easily. We have some of the most destructive kill power. We can SDI to some, or not SDI, we can whistle out of some of their stuff. They're fair and barren, stuff like that's really good, obviously, so are their Thunder Confirms. They don't have the best way to get in because they don't have a super good approach, unlike Pikachu has like quick attack, right? Well, Pikachu's kind of just got to come in, maybe use T-Jolts, and while the F-Smash nerf helped hurt us some, and all that, they were never really edge guarding us the same way Pikachu does. They're not as big. I find them a bit easier to dodge around and things like that. And they prefer to go for more ledge trapping, I found, outside of like the occasional like dare or bear or something like that. It's not as destructive as Pikachu. So while they can be a bit, you know, strong, they hit you and stuff like that, they have a hard time getting in. They don't have a super good approach option. They die very early. Things like that. Not the worst. They can definitely be more stage dependent. Certain stages are going to help you a lot more, help them a lot more. So be smart about that and just make it hard for them to approach and give them a lot of damage as they're having to approach. And then it's kind of going to make up for the fact that they're not killing you when they're touching you. They're just not going to be making, like, they're, they're going to be making bad trades throughout the game. Uh, because you have sword aerials, you can challenge them in the air a lot as well. Um, especially yellows. Like, I, I say yellows a lot as I go throughout this, but they're so good for challenging people because their hitboxes are so massive. So it's going to take you a long way in that. Now, Pikachu, on the other hand, that's that's definitely an even matchup. Pikachu has the distinct the distinction of one being bigger, so I think its hurt boxes are going to be bigger in some ways. Pikachu's edge guarding is absurdly good. Just back air super good, fair super good. Pikachu's quick attack is really good as an approach option because it has a hitbox. There's no repercussion for Pikachu taking in slow and thunder and T jolt camping. It has all the recovery and a lot of the kill power of Pikachu just toned down some. Has the drag down Nair's. Nair's Nair being a multi, it's pretty good as well, so it's going to combo and be a bit more annoying as opposed to something like a lightning loop from Pichu's back air. I feel like those are a bit harder to set up. Pichu's out of shield game is also insane with a ton of frame three to four aerials. Pichu dare is not really a problem. Like, I don't get dare that often. It's more so fair and bare because dare is very, like, linear in how you go about it. Thunder's pretty good, though, but I think it's even because you can kind of contest Pikachu pretty well. You can, like, the neutral's very back and forth. You just gotta watch out for things like tilt on your shield, the nair on your shield, the um, dare and the dash attack on your shield. But a lot of the times, you can just get out of there and not worry about it. And when you touch Peach, Pikachu, it's very hard for him to, like, He's going to take a lot of damage. He dies pretty early. You can intercept his stuff if you know how to deal with quick attack. Things like Nair, down tilt, up tilt. Um, those are all going to be quick attack if you read where he's going to go. And you usually can based on how he's recovering and how he's been recovering. Even then, even when he quick attacks the ledge, you can sometimes still down tilt or down air based on the way his hurt box goes and when he's snapping ledge. You can still intercept Pikmin or intercept T-Jolts and stuff and use them to extend your F-Smash hitboxes to potentially catch him if he's approaching. I think he edgeguards you well, but on stage you can definitely handle it pretty well. Just be smart about your ledge choices or your stage choices and pay attention to how he's using the platforms to kind of assist himself. Um, similar to how like the swordsmen like Krom and stuff do or Fox, where they like to use it in addition to their speed to kind of get out of there in time. But if you play in certain ways on the stage where they can't necessarily rely off those platforms, it makes it a lot harder because now they're kind of coerced into one spot. Pikachu can mix it up with the quick attacks, of course, but that also doesn't always solve the problem. And you're getting a lot of chip damage in the matchup as well. And if Pikachu hits something like that, you know, if Pikachu hits a... Um, Hits a Pikmin that's going to give him extra lag, and then you're going to be able to get in there and get a punish. So, just another one of those volatile matchups. It might go to slight disadvantage at some point, but I don't. I think without any... If, assuming they don't change anything, I think it could be even. Olimar just needs to play really on point, similar to how the Fox player and the Peach player are. you got to be really good with your parries. you got to be really good at exploiting what Olimar can do, because he's not the fastest. He doesn't have the best frame data. So everything you do needs to be very deliberate and fast and effective, um, or efficient, to be able to make sure you're not... 
you're minimizing as much downtime and punishability as you can. But when you do get your hits, it's going to matter so much more against Pikachu than, say, he would against you, right? Prana Plant loses. The character, I mean, the character has some stuff. It's like a lot of the other heavies. Terrible time approaching, but hits really hard. I believe it's called Patui. Their, their neutral will be the spike ball. That gets blocked by Pikmin. So if it, if it hits Pikmin, it hits it, and then it falls. It's still active when it falls, but that interrupts a lot of their stuff. They're slow, so they have a hard time approaching. They're a big body. They're combo food. Piranha Plant's ledge snap is terrible, and it's super easy to hit with, like, a down smash. So you can consistently hit it if your timing's consistent. Like, it's very easy to make punch that character off stage. If they go on stage, you have sword aerials. Just be careful about, you know, their down B. Don't get caught hitting that, because it has armor, it has range. Their poison cloud, that's something that'll stop Pikmin. It'll stop it, and then it'll, like, bounce them back so you can get them back. So just be careful about that. But just, like, take it slow, camp them out. You're going to get more when you hit them. Uh, but when they get up close, it's kind of scary, yeah. And their edge guarding can be all right because of Patui. But... It's another one of those, like, they shouldn't really be getting you that often. Um, it's, I mean, like I said earlier, you can win any matchup in this game if you're good enough and you outplay play your opponent. But that's not enough to do anything. Yeah, the Pikmin don't travel through side B, but that's not enough. Because while you throw a side B, I can throw it over. I can do something. I can come in there and punish you while you shoot out a side B. I'll take some damage. I don't care. I'll grab you. I'll take you. I'll throw you. Like, there's so many, like, it's not enough to just, it just doesn't stop things, right? Richter Belmont. I definitely have never thought the Belmont to be Dolomar. I still don't now. The nerfs almost change nothing. Like, yeah, you'll get knocked off stage summon. It might every now and then affect you, but it's not going to change that much. The neutrals kind of vary back and forth where you're throwing a bunch of things, I'm throwing a bunch of things. It's all about who's going to have an easier time getting in. I personally feel Olimar is going to get more out of it because it's a lot easier to block a cross or a holy water or something from a distance and not take any damage, whereas I can snipe you with Pikmin here and there while you're throwing them and then get the percent racks up, right? And that's going to be a lot more impactful. That's going to be a lot more impactful for you than uh, than I think he is. But his whip can make it really hard in neutral. He can punish you a lot if you're not careful and things like that. So just being smart about how you do things um, for both parties to go. It's very back and forth, similar to how like the Mega Man uh, and the Pac-Man, where it's just a little bit different. He's got some decent kill power. And his edge trapping's all right, but you can also combo him pretty well. You can edge guard him pretty decently. Like If you learn how to intercept his uh, tethers, it's pretty good. Purple side being the stage run off dare, things like that. Um, don't hit a shield willy nilly, he's gonna be at a shield. But at the same time, it's like you can also catch him a lot up close if he's not shielding or if you're smart about it because he doesn't have the best, like, up close boxing options. He's kind of stuck in that mid range with things like F tilt and stuff like that. So, very volatile, even matchup. Stages can definitely hurt or help you a lot, and that certain platform formations can make it very hard to approach. So, just be smart about where you're going in the matchup. Um, I'm not even gonna talk about Simon. Richter's clearly better because Simon has the fire, holy water that is going to let reds go through it, whereas Richter's got the aura, and that's going to stop all Pikmin. Uh, good SDI is also really important for um, getting out of Holy Water confirms, or mixing them up at least. Ridley, slight advantage. Um, Ridley has a decent advantage state against Olimar. I I'd say pretty good, actually. But the problem with that is, the neutral is very, like, how do you get in on Olimar? Well, you have to... Ridley's making, like, reads to get in. You're either dash tacking on a jump, or you're side being, or you're trying to approach some aerial, but, like, all of this suck. So, Olimar's playing it slow, and you're trying to get in, and most of the time you're going to lose trying to get in. And when Olimar touches Ridley, it might as well be the, the worst thing ever, because that character is nothing but combo food. It's so bad. Like, pre-patch, there there was a true zero to death I had lapped on Ridley, where if I touched you at zero with an up smash on Yoshi's store, you, you were losing your stock. And that is the, like, that's the general mentality. Like, on stage, big combo food dies very early. Off stage is a little bit harder to intercept, because the up B can kind of be annoying, but you can still down air it. You can still hit it with aerial semi-reliably. And they, uh, a lot of Ridleys like to side B to ledge when they're at when they're at like that level, so you just run off an F smash him if they get greedy with that. Uh, off stage, the recovery nerf definitely did hurt Olimar some, just because that nair is so good at like poking you over and over. So you got to get very creative on how you do it. But really doesn't doesn't have like the best the best like shield pressure options. So that or like the best out of shield options outside of like nair. So just don't hit a shield willy nilly, and then he's not pressuring your shield that well. So he's stuck in like a neutral where he's got to try and find his way in. And when he gets his way in, it's gonna be pretty good for him. But like it's the only reason it's not bad advantage, like a strong advantage for Olimar because his disadvantage state against Olimar is pretty well. Just don't be shielding too much because that side B is going to give him entire stage control and it can potentially end your stock. His fireballs can be kind of annoying. But if you have a red Pikmin on his face, like right on his mouth, um, it will actually block all of the fireballs. Like, and he won't shoot anything, because uh, the red won't die, and it'll take it all. So just kind of take your time with him. He's pretty fast. Just don't hit his shield willy-nilly, and you're going to be fine. The only reason he's still competitive in the matchup is just because he can press that advantage state on Olimar very well. But overall, I think Olimar's going to be winning more than he's losing, because he went like, the neutral and the advantage. Rob, I think it's an even matchup. I know a lot of Olimar players hate this matchup and think it's a losing matchup. I think 
just knowing how to deal with things like watch out for dare watch out for nair know what you can and can't punish learn how to parry pairing is going to help you a lot especially against uh reds are really good reds blues and purples oftentimes tank nair because they either have enough health or they're immune to the fire and then you're able to get a free uh smash punish when he nairs because he usually you're usually nairing when he's higher up instead of closer to the ground so you can get a free punish learning how to like shield gyro grab it throw it kind of pressure the opponent rob is also another one of those combo food examples but he's kind of kept viable uh unlike someone like ridley because his neutral is a lot more consistent and his advantage state's pretty good so he's got good shield pressure and he's got good boxing options with a down tilt and things like that and that kind of keeps it even because olimar's getting a lot of racked up passive damage where he's got to kind of snipe you with these projectiles that get in and then your sword aerials are super good against him because he's so big and he's kind of slowish so you can pressure him there. Off stage, it can be a bit tough to edge guard him. So sometimes you might need to opt for going for things like uh, ledge trapping or just kind of resetting the neutral. You can edge guard him if you want. Just be careful about things like up air. But that's again another thing where like maybe a purple side B out there is going to help, or a yellow, yellow down air, yellow back air. Go out there and kind of force him to respect an option. You can still chase people with Olimar. That's the nice thing about him. With recoveries like that where they can go high or something, you can chase them with up B. You don't always have to attack or even hit them. It's just like to kind of coerce them into doing something, going higher, and then making them burn up resources to get away from you, and then you're able to catch them. Uh, and that helps a lot. So he's got some good confirms. He's got Nair and stuff. He's got Gyro into his confirms. He's got the side B confirms. He's a bit scared. He can kill you pretty early. But at the same time, you can also combo him a lot. You can make it very hard for him in neutral. And you can really just stop him before he gets on top because he's rather slow. Robin, um, I'd say a strong, strong advantage. This mess match is so bad for Robin. Character's slow. You block most of projectiles. Your swords are better than Levin's sword, in my opinion. You can just stop him before he does a lot of anything, because he's so slow as well. And then you kind of just keep exploiting the fact that he has to approach because you block projectiles, but he can't approach, so he's taking all this damage, and he doesn't have good get-off-me options either. So when he gets hit by a purple or something, or you're up close combo him, he doesn't have much to get off you. His, like, Nair's pretty good, don't get me wrong, his arrows are decent, but they're not enough to keep him relevant. Um, so just like using your Pikmin to block his projectiles, forcing him to approach, punishing him for being for not being able to approach very well and being slow. And then when you get your purples, you really pressure him hard. You push him off stage. You consistently like down air and down, uh, down smash his uh, upbeat to the ledge and stuff like that. You're just gonna slowly whittle him down, and it's gonna be very bad for him. Rosa, I feel weird because like I've played I played this matchup with the buzz some. Um, I would say even um, because Olimar can't pressure shield that well, and Rosa can edge guard him decently, and I think Olimar lacks the extreme like extremely good speed to really pressure the character um but also rosa down b now takes all side b pikmin away and smashes so in smash 4 it only did smashes and purple side b so you could still get chip damage from non-purples well in this game they changed it to where all colors all side b and all smashes get down so it makes it a bit more frustrating for you to try and pressure and you can deal lumen you can do things like that it's very back and forth you're kind of edge guarding them when you can if you're really smart about your down airs and down smashes and stuff you should be able to intercept their up b semi reliably you can kill luma somewhat easily like a lot of characters can you hit very hard if you're smart about your pressure it's gonna it's gonna help you a lot yellows are very good because they're extra range and they, they linger a long time when they hit purples or when they hit lumen things like that whistle is also pretty good against rosa uh, up air and stuff because it's faster in this game so you're gonna be able to get out of more combos and more disadvantage you just have to be careful and pay attention to how luma is because that character can extend the range of a lot of things uh, and i think that kind of keeps her relevant a lot star bits can be kind of annoying because you're slow but you also get a lot of chip damage and if they are gravitational pulling a lot of things like side bees, you can bait it out and then you can come in there maybe with a yellow aerial or another aerial or something or a dash attack and try and get it on them so it's just a very back and forth matchup with nothing super oppressive from either character i feel or if it is it's kind of balanced out by what the other character can do to them so roy i actually have a slight advantage for olimar even with the nerfs i don't think it's enough for roy to go even he might go even in the future but he suffers from sour spots similarly to marth because they both have sour spots obviously but not to the same extent obviously he's still very good without it but he doesn't he doesn't oppress nearly as well and he has a bit of a hard time killing and because he has no sour spots and he, his up yada shield isn't as like ridiculous i find it be easier to live against him easier to fight him and then same thing watching out on those platforms and how they approach with that it's going to take you a long way his jab's not as good as crom's I mean, he's going to have a bit of a harder time killing and because of that because of the hitbox differences and the way their swords are coated with jab and stuff like that and their differently distrib distributed kill power I think it's going to be a bit easier for, Roy, uh, for you to fight Roy. He's got good speed, obviously. And he can still do damage when he's up close, but he has a harder time getting in. Um, but you're going to treat him the same, just with less kill power. A lot of like side B catching him, things like that. Um, catching him on his jumps, watching out on the platforms and how he's approaching with those and things like that. It's pretty straightforward to the Krom one. It's not too different, I feel. I'm just like slightly worse for, for Roy. Still a, still a totally viable matchup. Could go even in the future. Sheik. That's, that's a bad matchup. Sheik for Solomar is so bad. Like... 
you can whistle to a ton of things. She never kills you. You kill her extremely easily. Her speed means nothing. Because you block a ton of stuff. You get so much chip damage off Pikmin in this game. She dies way too early. You can block Bouncing Fish with Pikmin. Like, parrying works wonders against her. Like, it's just, she's just lacking in power. And that's the problem. And she's fighting one of the biggest powerhouses in the game. In so many ways. And her, every combo she's doing, I could probably make up. Like, one of her combos, I could probably make up with one white Pikmin. You know? So it's just like a super uneven distribution of power. I know a lot of Olimar players think we lose this. But... I play this stuff too much to, to, like, confidently say we lose this matchup because the nerf to us, yeah, it kind of hurt, but not too, too bad the more I play it. Like, uh, Shulk's fastest out of shield option is frame 10 air slash. So you can still up smash his shield once before he can air slash you, um, which is good. But he still suffers from, like, very polarizing options. Like, when he's in speed, when he's in jump, when he's in smash, he's very much locked into certain things he can do well. That's so like when he's in speed, you don't challenge Nair on shield. When he's in smash, you sit center stage, you hold shield. When he's in jump, you catch his jumps, and you can kind of read those things. And since he has a lot of large arcing swings that take forever, that kind of balances out the fact that they're so big and they're so good. Because if you dodge them, you're pretty much in the clear, right? And that's going to take you a lot farther than someone like Krom, where if you dodge it, he's already got another hitbox out. But their strengths come in, Shulk can be very polarizing and kill you early if he gets it, but at the same time, you can also make it very hard to him, for him to approach. You can kind of punish the fact that he's got slower frame data in a lot of ways, and his bad startup, and you can punish him on that. Uh, and that's going to take you a long way. And you can ledge guard him somewhat consistently. It's not nearly as scary as doing like a Krama B, because if you mess it up, you could hit, sure, but you're not getting like dragged down suicide dared while Krom lives, something like that. Um, and then just being able to exploit his own Monado arts and like the, the drawbacks they get and how he has to play a certain way can help a lot. If you catch him in a bu if you catch him in Buster, you get a big combo. It's a lot of damage. Same with Jump. If he goes into Shield, um, you can grab him. You can pummel a good few times a high percent and get a free up throw. Um, up tilt burns away through Shield Shield art. So there's a lot of good ways to do it. Purples really shut him down because he's so like the way he fights. Like they can catch him a lot of the times before he does things. So I think it just feels very back and forth. Just very back and forth and not, not super one-sided. Snake, another even matchup. Very back and forth. The nerfs did almost nothing to Snake. Um, like, yeah, our up smash getting worse means we can't purple up smash him fresh anymore. But he had a frame 6. His dare out of shield is frame 6. Cause it's frame 3. And it's 3 frames of jump squad. So he was already punishing. Or in theory, he was already punishing every up smash that wasn't a fresh purple one. Or maybe yellow. Up smash out of shield, pre-patch, so now he's just going to be doing that. He should be doing that all the time. The neutral is very much the same. It's just a lot of, like, back and forth. Using Pikmin to stop grenades, get our chip damage, get in. When we get in, we both have decent boxing options, except the difference is Olimars are much less committal than Snakes. Like, if we whiff them, it's not nearly as bad as he as he as if he whiffs an F-tilt or something like that. Whistle can help a lot against things like Nikita, things like up-tilt. Uh, you can actually SDI out of F-Tilt, so if he down throw F-Tilt you or just F-Tilt you sometimes and your SDI is good enough, you can F to, uh, SDI out of F-Tilt 1 before 2. I've done it myself. It's hard, but it's doable, so that kind of helps living a bit longer. Using Pikmin to intercept a lot of the projectiles. Pikmin intercepts Nikita, intercepts grenades, can intercept um, Mortar, being smart about things. So it's very back and forth. He has good kill power, but so do you. You can chase him up to the top part of the stage semi-reliably with his up B. So even if you don't always hit him, which you will definitely catch them at some points. I've done it to plenty of snakes by chasing them. Uh, you kind of coerce them into go to a spot and they don't get to land for free. Uh, you guys both get a lot of chip damage on each other. Grenades aren't too big of an issue. Reds tank them a lot so you, get to, you can deal with them very easily. And once you get snake in disadvantage on stage especially, you can tech chase him very well because he's a big body. He's not that fast. Um, you just need to watch out for things like dash attack on stage because the arms are invincible and they cross you up pretty easily. But you can usually pay attention to dash attack spacings in neutral tech, like pay attention to where he is in relation to you. And that's going to help you learn when to shield and when not to shield and how to deal with things. Maybe you space in a way where you look like you're about to get hit by it, but then you catch it with a pivot grab because your grab is so long and it's intangible that it'll beat it. So just very back and forth. He kills you easily. He gets a lot of damage, but at the same time, your combos are arguably the most destructive in the game. You can stop a lot of grenades. You can make him deal with a lot of his own projectiles in the way he doesn't like to by stopping them before they get to him. Things like that. So just very back and forth. You just have to be able to play patient and kind of pay attention to what he's doing and not like overcommit at the wrong time. You have to understand that it's going to be a slower paced match. And he might dictate it, so to speak, but you're kind of ju almost as much in control. Sonic. I personally think this is an even matchup. I've heard a lot of people. I I I heard a lot of people say Sonic's not good in this game, and he's definitely worse than he was in Smash Four. But I think the way Sonic was changed, and the way Olimar works in this game, he's still pretty good against Olimar. He edge guards decently with things like Fair and Bear because he has such good air speed and movement. And Fair especially because it lingers. He can combo out of things off Spin Dash like crazy, like Spin Dash into Fair, Spin Shot or whatever it's called into Fair. He can do that. He can kill you with it. 
Um, his F Smash has solid range; it can two frame still. Like it can it can outrange you stuff. It's got the pullback on it. He's got good. At, he's very uncommittal, non-committal, neutral. I feel against Olimar. Things to like mixing up his spin dash, jump aways, non you know canceling it, shielding whatever it is when he gets up close. Uh, he's got good frame data, good movement speed. He can get out of there. Homing attack is inconsistent to deal with because you can't react to it because it's so fast. So it creates a constant guessing game. So while yeah, you can intercept a lot of his stuff if you're really if you know what's happening. It's like you can't always know what's happening. So it's even because he can kind of play that constant mix-up game. And when he hits you, it can kind of be destructive. He gets decent damage off his combos. And while some of his moves don't always connect the best, and you can kill him pretty easily as well, he can kind of keep it relevant or like relatively close because he's got those constant mix-up. He's got solid kill power, and if he really wants to, he can camp you with a lead, and that's pretty hard to deal with. Toon Link, uh, slight losing. Um, unlike Link, he's a bit. He doesn't have as good of frame data. His projectiles are a bit worse, and they're more traditional. It makes him easier to block. And I feel like because of that, he doesn't have like the absurd range and kill power like Link does when he's up close with the sword and all that stuff. It kind of doesn't balance out. So you're just gonna be like zoning him out a lot, kind of taking a slow, blocking his projectiles, outranging him with your yellows and things like that, pressuring him when you have purples. Um, hitting a shield's not as bad as hitting like a Link, I feel, because he doesn't have the back air and things like that. He still has decent options, don't get me wrong. And I think he's got some good confirms, and he can be kind of annoying when you fight him. But it's not enough to keep it even. And even then, I thought Link might be slight advantage anyways. So it could go either way. Villager. I think Villager's even. Unlike Isabel. Villager has... Lloyd Rocket in neutral, which helps him a lot. It kind of puts up another thing he has to deal with because he can Lloyd Rocket and that can block Pikmin or that can catch me if I'm not shielding and he can create block strings make he can grab me if I'm doing it or he can you know catch my jump with a slingshot. So it's very back and forth. I throw things at him, he throws things at me. Like my reds will beat Lloyd Rocket and I'll F smash him and I can you know, edge got him off stage. I can hit his balloons and things like that. Same with Isabel. I forgot to talk about that earlier. But like their recoveries can be somewhat exploitable with things like down tilt or down smash. And also, if you throw a Pikmin onto a Villager's head or Isabel and it ticks, it can actually pop their balloons with the hurt box or uh, the hit box of it. So that can be an additional thing as well. But his pocket, same thing. It's kind of an every now and here, the, here, there thing. Um, the tree can be kind of annoying. It gives them an extra way to potentially ledge trap you um, if you're not careful. It can also give them the act, which can set up and does another kill move. Their bowling ball is a good way to catch you if you're trying to recover straight up. It can just kill you. It's pretty good. But it's very back and forth. I'm throwing a bunch of things, getting chip damage. I'm trying to get my aerials and my kill moves when I can. And he's doing the same thing, except with Lloyd Rocket and Slingshot. And then when he's going for more, when I'm off stage, he's trying to constantly poke me with these options or hit me with some big move and then kill me from there. And then we're kind of just going at each other until one of us dies. There's no super like extreme thing that one of us has over the other that makes it so we just win. Wario, uh, slight advantage, Olimar. I think Wario... While he has decent mobility, it's not good. In, it's not Mario level mobility, or at least not the way he can abuse it. He doesn't have Mario level framed it either. Like so, he's like a slightly toned down version. And because of that, I think the way he plays, he's very susceptible to losing to disjoints and losing to high camping, or not camping, but like high chip damage from the the side bees, Right. So you're getting a lot of damage while he's approaching. So you're going to be like catching him with your disjoints a lot. Yellows are especially good. Purples can disrupt him. He's got some solid confirms. Uh, landing up air, by the way is a lot better now because of our increased hurt box so he can hit us with it a lot more and he's got some waft confirms but it's not necessarily enough to like guarantee everything for him you should still be keeping him out a lot you can still kill him pretty early as well um he can eat pikmin which will heal him for a little bit and has almost no lag so that's pretty good and his recovery is not bad but overall he still has to be the one he's still the one approaching having to set the tone and we're getting so much off chip damage in this game that all we need is one big combo on him and now we've got a massive lead and we can keep keeping him out um, so when he gets in, yeah, it's kind of annoying. He's got some decent buttons, but it's like getting in is the hard part. It could definitely, it might go to even similar to Ness in the future, but I feel like he kind of lacks some of the nuanced movement and approach options as Ness, so it would probably stay in slight advantage in my opinion. Just got to watch out for his confirms and know when he's trying to hit your shield with stuff and just be very um, proactive on catching him before he gets in. We Fit Trainer, I think strong advantage. Could, could go down to slight advantage. Um, I agree with that, Poke. I, I definitely think it's slow pace, but Olimar definitely plays the aggro game a lot more. Because he wants to be in your face. We fit trainer. Character gets camped really hard. Deep breathing's kind of scary, and that's why one of the reasons I want to put it down a slight advantage potentially. But right now, I feel like you just still camp the character really hard. You try to not respect their good. You respect their poor hitboxes, things like that. Um, and you just take it slow. Pikmin can intercept things like sun salutation, um, the the soccer ball, whatever it is. They can even like if there's a Pikmin on we fit trainer and they soccer ball. The Pikmin can actually hit the soccer ball and hit it back at them right when it ticks when they pull it. So the way to intercept that you have to be. It's just very scary up close against them because they have solid buttons with deep breathing. They have incredible kill power. Their out of shield option is really good with bear. Um, and it is one of those slower ones where you, they're going to be camping a lot. They're going to be going off stage. And they're going to be ledge camping, and you just have to be care comfortable with doing that. But I could be seeing a slight advantage in the future. 
I would probably need to play it more and see how it develops. Like, you're just not going to be, you just don't want to be near Wii Fit a lot, so you're just going to try and keep it as, like, distant as possible and get a lot of free damage, and when you get your purples, you can go and approach and kind of create your advantage state and make it hard for, hard for, uh, Wii Fit to do much about it. Wolf O'Donnell. I think it's an even matchup. Yeah, the nerf to our shield pressure hurt a little bit, but it's the same thing. We're going to be catching him. This is another one of those volatile matchups. We both kill each other very early. Olimar can intercept a lot of the say. Olimar can intercept a lot of the different recoveries from Wolf. Yellow down smash will always beat side B. Down down tilt beats things like up B very easily. Down air can intercept both, of course. Um, Wolf can kill you very early with things like bear or down smash, F tilt, things like that. He can intercept your recovery decently. Um, you kind of just have to respect his his uh, shield pressure tools with things like Nair on shield and all that, but you generally don't want to be right on top of him. You kind of want to play that range game, treat yourself almost like a sword character and be catching him before he gets right on top of you. And that's where it's going to be. He's going to be throwing lasers. You're going to be throwing a lot of Pikmin and then accept him. And when you get purples, you can definitely pressure him, but it's kind of hard because he's got some decent speed on him and solid buttons. So it's just a very back and forth game. Uh, you just need to be able to exploit his disadvantage very well because on stage it can be a bit rough when he's put you in disadvantage or he's juggling you or he's comboing you pretty well. And he's got some solid zone breakers with things like dash attack um, and just good ways to mix up his options. But I don't I don't think it's super one-sided either way. Yoshi. I actually want to put this in slight even or slight advantage. Yoshi's not bad. He's kind of one of those like scary up close characters, but you can kind of contest him pretty well. Smart use of your aerials to stop him from getting in. Just don't hit a shield willy-nilly or you're going to get narrowed out of shield. But knowing what you can punish, intercepting his recovery, blocking it with Pikmin. He kind of lacks the Mar the raw Mario, like, bursty, like, frame data options. Because no one really does it like Mario, right? But also has the speed like Mario. Because Yoshi's fast, but it's not the same way like Mario where he's like, bam, 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 right? Um, like, nerf, jab, you know, whatever. Like, bear, up tilt, or bear, F tilt, things like that. Yoshi's definitely good, but he's a bit. I find he, him a bit more susceptible to to being snubbed while he's trying to approach. Um, and if you if you keep an eye out for his like command grab and his kill confirms, like the Baron and stuff like that, and the and the tilt, it's not too too bad. So it's just kind of like a standard keep him out of your face, use Pikmin to block him, get a lot of rack up damage, catch him with your sword, your sword esque aerials and stuff like that before he's right on top of you and keep knocking him out um, because he lacks the super good speed or like active hitboxes just force his way in. And even when he's on top of you, it's not that destructive. It's like a lot of like single hit, like bam, I did that, right? Whereas like Peach is like bam, 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 bam. It's, it's totally different. So I think because he lacks that super hard constant pressure and he struggles to get in, it's very similar to like Wario, where like he really loses the swords and he doesn't have the mar the raw Mario frame yet to really push it when he's up close. Young Link, uh, slight advantage for Olimar. He similar to Toon Link. He la except he lacks even more kill power. He's very setup based which can help, but at the same time, he has a lot of single hit kill moves, so Whistle really messes him up. Pikmin block a lot of his projectiles, so you can actually beat them. A lot of times he dies very early. Honestly, he just like, it's just like an uneven distribution of kill power. You both throw a lot of things, and, you have, and he has solid confirms, but like, he's just losing the chip damage war the entire match, because he's trying to hit you, and then you're getting all this damage while you're blocking his projectiles, and then when you hit him with like a purple, you're constantly pressuring him. The biggest thing is like up close is a bit scary because his frame data is very good, especially with aerials, even out of shield options. So you're not going to be hitting hitting him so much like right up close. You're going to be doing a lot of like spaced aerials, like a space back air or something like that, right? And if you space a back air, it's not punishable from Young Link. Or if you space a forward air, it's not punishable from Young Link. So you're going to be hitting with a tipper of things. Yellows are really good for that. Your yellow down air can out or your yellow up air can outrange everything he does. You just need to watch out for his mix-ups with like bomb, boomerang, bow, or down tilt, nut bees, or like you know back air and up tilts or whatever it is, and just be careful about all of that. And you'll be able to you'll be able to really, I think, make it harder for him than it is than it is for you. Zelda is an even matchup. I feel um, it's just it's just annoying. Like it's a slow-paced matchup because you can't reliably get through Phantom. It's like you have to constantly like throw stuff and just get your chip damage and play it slow because you, you're too slow to get past Phantom. And then when you're up close, Nehru's Love is such a good get-off-me option. Not only is it a good get-off-me option, but it's also the reflector that lingers, so you can't get too greedy with your smash attacks. So you got to be very careful on how you go about things. The, you're going to have to articulate how you're approaching and play very slow and know what to respect. You can whistle certain things, know when you find your openings, like when there's a little bit of lag because you can grab or like back air or something like that, the Nehru's Love when they whiff. Or, you know, maybe they're about to phantom or something like that, and you catch them right before it comes out, so you break the phantom. So you got to really understand how to fight Zelda and look at the openings. But I think it's neutral because she forces it to almost play at her pace because you can't do a lot of it. she got some solid kill power, so you can't hit her shield willy-nilly. And the, the Nehru's Love kind of forces you off. And Phantom also blocks Pikmin because it's like a body. So it'll like hit them and they'll fall down. So you have to be really careful about how you're going about it. But thankfully, she doesn't really have any good approach options. 
So she's kind of left like also playing this constant like slow game, and you're able to exploit that from her um, and kind of just win your your chip war. But it is a very like if she does it, she's gonna win. If you do it right, you're gonna. It's pretty much whoever's letting their their projectiles and stuff do their thing. Zero suit, slight advantage. The main redeeming quality of Zero Suit is she has an absurdly good out of shield option with being frame four. Uh, boost kick is going to kill you a lot, so she can punish a lot of stuff. If you're good about it, but you're not really wanting to hit her shield. You're oftentimes catching her as she's approaching. One of the most uh, prominent ones is when she approaches with a nair. You throw a purple side beam. It's actually going to catch her feet before she gets to you, and it's going to knock her out. And then you're going to be able to snub her neutral game, and it's going to make it a lot harder to them approach. You're getting a lot of chip damage. She can't always get the Pikmin off that easily as well. Her edge guarding is somewhat good with things like fair and bear because she has such high mobility. But if you're really keen on them, uh, you can oftentimes either whistle past them or just dodge them outright and make it harder. She also can't handle the low recovery that well either because she can go down there, but she usually can't catch you while she's going down. And that's going to help you recover a lot more. Um, on stage, it's scary because our frame data is so good. Pairing is pretty good as well, but just like knowing what you can and can't punish, similar to some of the sword characters like Krom or Cloud or whatever. It's like you don't try and punish that Nair sometimes because it's a mix up, so you have to read it. And then you go from there. But I think because you're short, you're able to kill her pretty early. You can mess up some of her stuff. Even at even at a low tier city, we just saw some some instances of debuzz popping out of boost kick. So I don't know how you know consistent that move is, but that's that's a pretty solid factor. And since she <coughs> she's more about hitting like reads, like down bees or uh, down smashes into kill moves, or like raw off stage kill like aerials, as opposed to like ladder combos in this game, and that actually lends to our success more because she has to make straight hits. That gives us more advantage. That gives us more time to land these these percent increases with our side beads. Gives us more time to hit her with our straight moves because our straight attacks are much stronger than hers. Uh, we can intercept her down bees with our up airs and things like that if we read. They like to recover that way. So I think when she gets in, she's kind of scary, and you can't necessarily hit her shield. But she doesn't always have the best. I don't know the di, uh, but. I don't. You don't always have the best way to approach a zero suit. And you can snubber a lot with purples, and they can do so much. And then I think Olimar's going to be dictating the neutral a lot if he's playing it well. And then off stage, she can't exploit him that hard. But yeah, that's my matchup chart. Um, this is once again assuming that Olimar's shield is fixed, uh, since you cannot reliably play around a non-functioning shield. Uh, you can't like you can't play around something I can't see. So I wanted to make this with the assumption that it's fixed, but the, all the other balancing changes are based around 3.1. Uh, it's probably not. I definitely don't expect everyone to agree with this. I think the only two disadvantaged matchups are Lucina and Palutena because they can push not only the neutral semi well and do good pressure, but also their off stage is so good. They can they can they push the disadvantage aspect of Olimar that well while also having a equally great neutral. And the only reason it's not strong disadvantage is because Olimar's advantage state and kill power is that crazy good. Uh, but I don't think any character really mollywops Olimar in this game. Uh, I think he's still pretty good. He's somewhere between high tier and bottom of top tier. Um, I think a lot of players in the current meta still suck at punishing his options. <laughs> Go watch low tier city top 8 and watch how many people try to shield grab or pick some terrible option and don't punish an up smash. It's embarrassing. So don't let the, 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 the Twitter propaganda fool you. He definitely has flaws and he's definitely been nerfed. Players just suck at fighting him. Uh, but I think he's still good in a lot of ways. His advantage is still really good. You just have to work very hard now, and you don't get the pressure nearly the same as a lot of the cast do. Um, so it's a lot slower pace. He presses for more of a defensive gameplay, which, in my opinion, is a shame, but <laughs> I don't balance the game. So, but yeah, that that's my matchup chart. But, uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.